The Prowlers return from a week off and hit the road to Connecticut to visit the Danbury Hat Tricks. Good evening, everybody. Will Wiggleman here with you on the PHP Network. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Well, a week off did the Prowlers a lot of good. They get a couple of bodies back tonight. Liam Freeborn and Tucker Scantleberry will dress once again after missing the last game against Motor City. Freeborn has missed the last two. Also a new signing to tell you about, Ross Bartlett joining the team today, although he will not be able to suit up for tonight's game. We have much more on the pregame show coming up next. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowlers home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab or call the box office at 810-985-6166. Secure your seats today. Welcome back to Danbury. Prowlers Hockey is back after a week off last week. And they're set for a matchup with the Danbury Hattricks in a building that has not been too kind to the Port Huron Prowlers over the years, especially the last few winless in their last nine here at Danbury Ice Arena trying to flip the script here tonight. But before we talk about tonight's game, let's take a look back at the last game for both of these teams starting with the home team Hattricks they were at home against the Binghamton Black Bears and they ended up falling by a final score of four to two. Bit of a back and forth contest as Peter Izzo scored to get the winner for Binghamton with under three minutes to go. And the Black Bears clinch a playoff spot. Tyson Kirkby had a goal and a helper for Binghamton and Nolan Egbert showed up big for Binghamton. 42 saves on 44 shots. Meanwhile, for the Hattricks, Johnny Ruiz led the way with a goal and an assist as Danbury and Binghamton played one of their typical rough and tough games. Couple of suspensions resulting from that for the Hattricks. Nick DiNicola and Zach Pamaleon will both sit out tonight's game. Jared Yao is also suspended for tonight's game as he is serving the second of a two game suspension here tonight. So three players out of this Danbury lineup and two of them as a result of that last game. For the Prowlers, it's been a little bit and it was a 4-3 overtime loss that they've had to sit there and chew on for these last couple of weeks. They battled with Motor City. They were shorthanded, missing Tucker Scantleberry and Liam Freeborn who were both back tonight. But Evan Foley's line was able to get a couple of goals in the opening period. Motor City tied in the second. They both scored in the third. Then TJ Delaney got the OT winner. Prowler's power play let them down in that third period. They were 0 for 5 on the man advantage in the final 20 minutes. And all of those power plays, or four of those five power plays came when it was a 2-2 game they could have taking the lead, they could have put the game away even, but they weren't able to convert on the man advantage and that hurt them in that game. Take a look at what this means for the standings. Binghamton and Columbus, the first two teams to clinch their playoff spots as they do so last weekend. Prowlers still sitting in third place with the Mississippi Seawolves unable to gain any ground on them last weekend as they fell in a couple of games to the Blue Ridge Bobcats and the Carolina Thunderbirds. Meanwhile for Danbury, seven points back of the Motor City Rockers for second place in the Empire Division. And a guy that the Prowlers didn't see last time they were here, but has been a big contributor for Danbury so far this season. Josh LaBelle, since joining the lineup, 20 points in 20 games on the back end. 
He was acquired from Columbus for financial considerations before the season, and he already leads all Danbury Hattricks defensemen in points. He was a second team all-star with the River Dragons last weekend, and he slots into the top pairing here tonight. A huge, huge addition for the Hattricks coming into this one. For the Prowlers, Liam Freeborn is back tonight. He is their leading goal scorer, lead, leader in points as well, and he is a welcome back for the Port Huron Prowlers. 18 goals, 39 points, missed the two games in Motor, against Motor City, the home and home, that the Prowlers ended up getting swept and picked up one of a possible six points over that weekend. So he will be a welcome back to the lineup. Let's see where he slots in. He's back on that top line with Matt Graham and Austin Federley. Tristan Sim slots in alongside Evan Foley and Vinny DeCumbis. And Dan Chartrand drops down to the third line. That will include Tucker Scantleberry and Dalton Jay. And if you want to see how deep this Prowlers team is right now when they have all the forwards healthy, Sam Merritt is the extra forward tonight. And that's not even including Ross Bartlett, who the Prowlers signed today. He will have to sit out tonight's game and tomorrow's game as he continues to serve a two-game suspension. Well, he has to serve the entirety of the two-game suspension that he picked up when he was a member of the Motor City Rockers at the beginning of the season. That was actually in Port Huron. He wasn't dressed for that game, but he was suspended for two games for his actions. So after he serves those two games, he will begin his second stint as a Port Huron Prowler on Sunday. With 16 games left in the regular season, he'll have to play in 15 of those 16 to be eligible for playoffs. As we get set for opening puck drop here in Danbury as they announce the starting lineup for Danbury. Let's give you the Orthopedic Associates starting lineup for the Port Huron Prowlers. It will be that third line of Dan Chartrand, Tucker Scantleberry, and Dalton J. Of course, Jay, I'll only mention it this one time, one point away from 500 in his FBHL career. Alex Johnson and Braden Deck will get the start on defense, and Ian Wallace is between the pipes tonight for the Port Huron Prowlers as they try and take out a thorn in their side in the Danbury Hattricks. Not only are they winless in their last nine games in this building, they're one eight and two overall against the Danbury Hattricks since the start of the 2021-22 season. And this is the only building that they have been shut out in all season long. Connor McCullum, the presumed starter for Danbury, the only goaltender to shut out the Prowlers this season. We'll take you down to ice level for tonight's National Anthem and the rest of the pre-game ceremonies.
that is tonight's national anthem as we get set for puck drop between the Prowlers and the Danbury Hat Tricks. Take a look at tonight's starting goaltending matchup. Connor McCollum will go once again for the Hat Tricks, their starter all season long. He has a fantastic 3-1-5 goals against average and a 9-13 save percentage to go along with a great 17-9 and three record. As he started in, in both of the wins against Elmira last weekend, did not play in the loss to Binghamton. He's the only goaltender to shut out the Prowlers this season. That is his only shutout of the campaign. Ian Wallace will get a shot between the pipes for the Prowlers tonight as Port Huron searches for who will take the reins as the starting goaltender with Tucker Tynan dealing with his well-publicized lawsuit up in Canada as Connor McCollum well, as Ian Wallace and Makar Sokolov battle to take that spot. Wallace will get the start here tonight and the opportunity to take the reins. Hat tricks will start with Connor Woolley, Chase Harwell, and Billy Berry up front. Berry out of Wooks University making his pro hockey debut tonight. They'll start with Josh LaBelle and the former Prowler Dustin Henning, who was traded here by the Watertown Wolves less than a month ago. As he'll face the Prowlers once again, he visited McMoran Place with Watertown the first time the Wolves came to Port Huron. Wasn't there the second time, as he was already here in Danbury. As he gets another opportunity against his former team. I talked with him earlier today after Hattrick's morning skate, and he talked about how happy he is here in Danbury. He's already gotten some respect. He has an A on his sweater, and he's in the starting lineup. We're underway, and it's bounced Back to Alex Johnson, the first of three games this weekend here in Danbury between the Prowlers and the Hat Tricks. Here comes Billy Berry dumping it in. He'll chase after it along with Braden Deck. Now Alex Johnson tries to work it out. That went off a body and in. Icing waved off as LaBelle first on it. If you missed the pregame show, LaBelle did not play against the Prowlers last time they were here. But he has been point per game since joining the Hat Tricks lineup immediately following that series. Three Hat Tricks suspended for this game. Nick DiNicola, Jared Yao. As that one's dumped in. Along with Zach Pamaleon. Centering feed to Compass, stopped by Connor McCollum. And he'll hang on for a whistle and a faceoff. Exactly a minute in. That's something we saw a few weeks ago against Watertown. Decumbus scored 59 seconds into the first game of a three game set with the Wolves. And he gets the first shot on goal there tonight from just about that same spot. Long lead pass was behind its intended target. Ends up going all the way down for an icing. So we'll get another face up down in Cullum, Connor McCullum's end. Patrick's had their top line out there. It's Corey Cunningham, Johnny Ruiz, and Jacob Ratcliffe, who's fresh off the IR playing in his first game since January 27th. As Frank Schumacher shot that one off a body and wide. Ratcliffe is wearing a full bubble here tonight. Here's Evan Foley back in, tried to slide towards the front, steered away by McCullum. Now Ruiz looks to split the D. Parsons comes over and knocks him off the puck. One-handed along, Decumbus skates into it. He's all by himself with the Prowlers in the midst of a change. He'll dump it right on McCullum, who scoops it up and hangs on for a whistle and a face-off. Minute 40 gone in this one, Prowlers with the only shot so far, 4-0. 
in favor of Port Huron in that category. Top line for the Prowlers out there against Michael Falenga's line for Danbury. As Graham and Falenga tie up on the draw, it's bounced out to center and ends up on Dalton Young's stick. Graham back towards Young. He'll have to chase after it. And now Adam Heinzel right up for Matt Graham. The Prowlers team leader in assists this season and their franchise leader in helpers. Feeds it in front, Freeborn. Couldn't get all he wanted on that shot, just rolled away from him. Now Dalton Young with some fancy stick moves. Had it lifted by LaBelle, who takes the puck now. LaBelle hangs out behind his own net. Both teams in the midst of changes as he's watched by Liam Freeborn. They wave the icing off. And Johnson has to leave it behind the net. Scantleberry comes in for it. Stick handles his way out. Tried to find Merritt, but he couldn't connect on the pass. Henning dumped it back in. Deck finds it. And now Dalton J cross side speed to Johnson. Now Scantleberry try to move. He ends up dumping it instead. J looking towards behind the net puck. Popped up in the air and we lost it. Must have gone out of play, so they'll blow it dead. And we'll get a whistle and a face-off. Tights referees, Jordan Krabel and Derek Waziak. The linesmen are Marty Heiser and Justin Kowalski. Off this face-off. It was captain versus captain. Ruiz won that battle, but Tecumbas keeps it in. Feeds it to Sim. He'll play it back this way to Parsons. Tried to go down behind the net, but LaBelle cut it off. He'll send Corey Cunningham on his way. He was suspended the last time these two teams played. Tried a centering feed to Ratcliffe. Just slipped under his stick. Tetro dumps it around. Foley taken in by Cunningham. And now fed back across. Tecumbus first on it, poked away by Ruiz. He's in, and he lifted it too high. Ruiz first back on it. Turns the corner, shot deflected down, ends up going wide. And now Woolley tried to cycle it back deep, and so it was taken by Foley. Sim able to touch it out back to center, and Tetro retreats into his own end. Four minutes gone in the opening period. Dump deep where Dalton Young collects it. He finds Austin Federley, cross ice speed to Freeboard, looking towards Graham who is behind the defense, but Willie cut off that pass. Heinz left it for Young. Got it only as far as the line where McKittrick kept it in. And now that dump attempt also gloved down. That was by Billy Berry. Graham tried to slip it deep. Henning had it stolen by Freeborn. Puck sits on the wall. Berry plays it off the glass and out to center. Adam Heinzel will settle it down. He waits for his team to complete a change and sends Scantleberry on his way. Abdella over to the near side. And it's fed out toward Stoyshevsky. Puck slips over to the near side boards. Abdella walks. That one went wide and they'll whistle it down. As the net came off, it's Morton, so we'll get a stoppage and a timeout. 14.49 to go in period one, no score. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I'm proud to serve farmers because everything they do matters. If I could choose one word to describe a farmer, I would say essential. Dedicated. Enterprising. The most creative people. They're providing food for the rest of the world. Some of the qualities I look for uh, when hiring is personality, perseverance, someone that's determined. We want to be able to hire someone that understands what we're supporting, and ultimately that's the grower. 
Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowler's home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab or call the box office at 810-985-6166. Secure your seats today. Welcome back to Danbury early. Going to the opening period, still no score. Prowlers have to keep everybody on after the net came off. That's his third line, centered by Tucker Scantleberry. He missed the last game with an injury for the Prowlers. And here comes Dalton Jay tipping it by. He has a two on one with Chartrand. Tried to slide it across, but it's kicked away by the sliding Xavier Abdella. Scantleberry, a nearly point per game guy, 23 points in 24 games. Prowler certainly missed him. And it's fired in by Brendan Young, also making his pro hockey debut. One of a few hat tricks doing that out of Young out of Wentworth Institute of Technology. Also played four seasons at SUNY Plattsburgh. Buck almost stolen, Merritt keeps it in. LaBelle tried to play it up the wall, Merritt flies back in for it. Now LaBelle again, slips it up the board, Schumacher keeps it alive, and LaBelle with another opportunity. This time he gets it out to Ratcliffe who sends Ruiz in. Shot caught up in Parsons, trying to knock it away. Now it's Cunningham, turning in the corner on Parsons, who tries to kick it up the wall. Ratcliffe gets it back deep. Schumacher sends it up. LaBelle sticks it down to Ruiz. Backdoor play, Ratcliffe. He missed everything. Puck skied out of play. Jacob Ratcliffe found himself all alone, sliding down the back side. Ian Wallace slipped o slid over to make that as difficult as he could. And Ratcliffe, I think he just simply missed everything and rose it up top. They'll have to adjust the sights. Prowlers catch a break there. They'll have Sam Merritt taking this base off. They'll go against Chase Arwell. Just as soon as they resolve the net issue. Merritt wins that base off back clean. Now it's Parsons. Threw it right at the linesman as he was trying to clear it off the boards. Prowler's still able to work it out. This time Parsons goes D to D to his usual D partner, Frank Schumacher. Now Foley into Federley. His shot stopped by McCollum and it sticks to him, no rebound. Prowler's still the only team credited with shots so far tonight, 5-0, the shots in favor of Port Huron at this point. Played off the glass and out. Heinzel tried to glove it down. Instead comes to Woolley. Back pass, couldn't find a teammate. Browlers look to spring a rush the other direction. Freeborn was taken down from a knees, just able to get the puck deep. Freeborn may have lost escape blaze. He's having trouble getting back to his feet. I think Freeborn lost his blade. Here's Federley in tight off the side of the cage. Federley still working. Freeborn hopping to the bench. Linesman picks up his skate blade right at center and Prowler's lucky that nothing went too wrong there with Freeborn having to hop all the way from the offensive zone back to the bench. Prowler's in offside as there was a bit of a miscommunication between Scantleberry and Dan Chartrand. 12.16 to go in period one. Hopefully Liam Freeborn can get his skate blade back on. It's 
Scantleberry and Falanga will get set for this face off. It's not something you see too often. The skate play coming out. Here's Tetra, long lead pass, deflected in. Wallace stops it behind the net. Deck rimmed it up, took a funny hop. And then Wallace has to make his first save of the night. As the shot came in after the, he rimmed the puck around, or Deck rimmed the puck around. It took a funny hop off the Zamboni door and popped out into the slot. Michael Falanga got the shot off and Wallace gloves it down. Falango, another player who was on the hat tricks but did not play the last time these two teams matched up in December. He was away from the team for about a month but has returned and playing here tonight. He was selected by the Bobcats in the expansion draft and reacquired in a three team deal with Elmira before the season started. Split last year with Mississippi and Danbury. Won the Commissioner's Cup with the hat tricks. Falanga's line back out there. He'll take the draw against Evan Foley. It comes to LaBelle. His shot deflected. Score. Right in front of the net, Brendan Stoyshevsky getting a stick on it. And Danbury breaks the ice. Thirteenth of the year for Stoichevsky. Right off the faceoff win by Falanga. A quick wrister from LaBelle and a nice deflection by Stoichevsky. Nothing Wallace could do. Stoichevsky tipped it right in front of Ian Wallace. And after just one point over his last four games, which is unlike Brandon Stoichevsky, he gets himself back on the board. Dalton Young gloving that puck down. He'll give it over to Adam Heinzel who gives it back. Prattlers find themselves in a hole. As that one's dumped in, icing waved off. So Daniel McKittrick forced to play it. Tried right, to send a pass across. Coming back for it is Cunningham. He's watched by Matt Graham. Now worked up to Ratcliffe. Patrick's coming back with numbers. Sent deep by McKittrick, here's Young. Pass out of the reach of Austin Federley. Falanga and Bodon Zinchenko getting credit for the assist. Here's Harwell, he scores. Chase Harwell slips past the Prowler's defense and extends his four game point streak and to make it two nothing. And nice play there from Chase Harwell. They will slip by Adam Heinzel and Dalton Young there. Couple of quick ones for Danbury makes it two nothing. Two goals in under a minute for Danbury. And now the Prowlers need a response. Alex Johnson harassed, works it up the wall right into Harwell. He'll spin it back in. Parsons dumps it in. Abdella and Jay after it. Tetro rims it around, got through Barry. Parsons towards the net, it was blocked. Shirtran backhands it in. Prowlers touch up and go back after it. Tetro up to Harwell, on towards Barry. And now Parsons takes it, quickly up towards Scantleberry. He wasn't ready for it. Now rim this side to Young. Falenga with some speed, chips it around Scantleberry. Stoyshevsky left it. Schumacher trying to work it up the wall. Pulled out of the pile, now back to the boards. Scantleberry plays it off the glass. It drops right in front of the benches. Merritt flying in, tried to give McKittrick some trouble. And now Foley fresh off the bench, touches it to Braden Deck. 
Stomp right back in. McCullum played it around towards LaBelle. That was a bit dangerous. There was a prowler in the area. And now Foley with a steal. Tried a centering feed. Ends up coming to Falenga. He'll get the red line, dump it in, and puts a little reverse hit on Braden Deck. Merrick quick up to Federley. Try to feed a pass across. Ends up on Cunningham's stick. Curling away from Deck. Foley came in to throw a hit. Now Ratcliffe lost it. And it's chipped out by Foley. Slowly rolls down. Abdella gives it up to Henning. Now Federley with a steal in front. They score! Liam Freeborn back in the lineup. He gets the Prowlers on the board and cuts the Danbury lead in half. And some good forechecking from Austin Federley to steal the puck behind the net from Xavier Abdella. And the Prowlers able to get themselves back in the game for Liam Freeborn, his team high 19th of the year. He extends his point streak to 14. And I know it says he played a game against Motor City a couple weekends ago. He did not, that is an error. So he did not lose his point streak by not playing, by playing in that game and not getting a point. It, he actually extends his point streak to 14 straight games. And also a team high 40th point for him. Hattrick's looking for the response as Wallace shoulders away the outside try. And we'll get a whistle and a face off and we'll take a timeout. Hattrick's get a couple, but Liam Freeborn has the Prowlers on the board. You're watching Port here on Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Back here in Danbury, we've seen a flurry of goals as we've had three within the last three minutes, within three minutes of playing time. Brandon Stoyshevsky, Chase Harwell, and then Liam Freeborn. It is 2-1 Danbury. We play with 8.29 to go in period one. Danbury trying to restore the lead as Tetro shot is blocked, Shirtran starts the other direction. Pass eludes Dalton J. He and LaBelle lock up. LaBelle able to get it up the boards. Harwell chips it out. Scantleberry comes in to throw a hit. And now Harwell couldn't feed a pass across. Shirtran plays it off the glass, took a funny hop off the stanchion. And now J sends Scantleberry in, but LaBelle knocked the puck off his stick. And then McCullum shot it right off of Tucker Scantleberry. Johnson trying to keep the puck in, couldn't do so, but he did keep the hat tricks from starting a rush the other way. And the Prowlers will get a change. Here's a long lead pass. Stepping around is Woolley. Harwell had his feed cut off by Johnson, who gets it up to Matt Graham. Freeborn hustling to join the rush. It's dropped to him. Tried to get it back to Graham. Tried a centering feed that was blocked by Henning. Graham finds it in the corner, around behind the net to Federley. Pass in front behind Schumacher, deflects wide off a stick. Plenty of traffic in front of Connor McCullum. Freeborn to Graham, back to Freeborn, gets in front, Federley scores! The top line strikes again, this time it's Austin Federley, and we have a brand new hockey game. Great work from the top line. 
And Federley, after making the pass for the first goal, gets rewarded this time. How about the give and go between Matt Graham and Liam Freeborn in the corner? Graham drawing all the attention, then Freeborn drew the attention away from Federley, fed it to the back door, and that's an easy one for Austin Federley, who picks up his 70th goal of his career and 13th of the season. Abdella works it up the wall, Foley slides in to keep it alive momentarily, and now it's worked out to Zinchenko, and knocked off his stick to Cumbus. One hands it back to Dalton Young. Johnson towards to Cumbus, slip past him. Now Abdella to Zinchenko. Backhand feed finds Falanga at the red line, right in on Wallace. And he decides to hang on to it in the bread basket for a whistle and a faceoff. 6.38 to go in period number one. So Matt Graham and Liam Freeborn picking up the assist, so already a goal and an assist for both Federley and Freeborn. Meanwhile, Graham picking up his team high 29th helper of the year. Off the draw, knocked down in the slot. Cunningham trying to corral it, and it slips out to center. LaBelle fires it right back around, and they blow it dead. Looks like the Prowler net came off again, I believe. And the referees are having a discussion at center. Again, the referees tonight, Jordan Kraybell and Derek Waziak, the linesman, Marty Heiser, and Justin Kowalski. And now Wallace having a conversation with Krabbel. The two goals for the Prowlers coming a minute and 28 seconds apart. So if you add it all up, that is four total goals in this game in four minutes and 34 seconds. So the goals coming in bunches right now as Wallace still having his conversation with the officiating crew. And now we'll get set to drop the puck. Danbury crowd getting a little antsy, ready to get this face off going. Sam Merritt will be kicked out. Tucker Scantleberry takes his place. Ruiz wins the face off from him. And now McKittrick tried to rim it around. It kicked off the Zamboni door. LaBelle rims it around. Schumacher towards Chartran. He's able to pitch fork it out. Merritt after it. LaBelle able to get to Cunningham. And now it's tipped along by Ruiz. Heinzel on it. Backhand pass to Schumacher. Trying to get back to Heinzel. And now Schumacher again. Federley couldn't get it out. Ruiz centering feed, taken away. Federley's pass knocked down. Cunningham dumps it in. And both teams make some changes. And it's worked up to Freeborn. Graham now to Schumacher. Prowlers set up the breakout. It's Alex Johnson. He'll work up the right wing side, dump it in before he's hit hard by Harwell. And that will draw our first penalty of the game. As Chase Harwell came flying in on Alex Johnson, they'll send Harwell to the box in the Prowlers. We'll get the quality power play going for the first time tonight. Sixth in the FPHL at 21.3%. Danbury penalty kill fifth in the FPHL at 81.4%. Went four for five in their last game against Binghamton with a shorthanded goal. That one sent right down the ice off the faceoff. Federley couldn't work it past McKittrick. 
And now Foley settles things down. Gives it across to Sim. It's Foley, Sim, Federley, Decumbus, and Graham on this power play unit. Federley trying to weave through. He was knocked down. And that will be another penalty. A hook is called against the hat trick. So the Prowlers will get a five on three for a minute and 33 seconds. Daniel McKittrick, the one to the box. So a big opportunity for Port Huron. When we come back, 4.57 to go in period one. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor. And this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Pepperoni Duo. A delicious combination of classic cut pepperoni, original pepperoni, 100% mozzarella cheese, and our famous flavored crust. Two kinds of pepperoni, all kinds of delicious. Hungry? Howie's! Back here in Danbury, 2-2 two, two hour score with 4.57 left to go in period one. Chase Harwell in the box for elbowing, Daniel McKittrick in the box for hooking, and the Prowlers have a minute and 33 seconds of five on three time. They'll switch up the power play unit. It's Jay, Merritt, Johnson, Scantleberry, and Freeborn on this power play unit. Johnson lined up as a forward right now. Maybe they'll try him over in that one-time spot over on the far side, the spot that's occupied by Mitch Jones when he's in the lineup. Jones not making the trip, but we do expect him to play when the Prowlers are back in Michigan for the entire rest of this month. The only other road games in the month of March for the Prowlers are two in Motor City. Other than that, it's all at McMoran Place. Check the Prowlers website for the full details of the schedule and get your tickets at phprowlers.com slash tickets. Be loud and proud for the Prowlers for this stretch run before the playoffs. I need to, need to pick up some big points, certainly not only to stay in that third spot, but maybe to try and challenge Carolina for that second seed. Off the face off, Prowlers Get the power play to work. It's Scantleberry. Johnson is down low right now. There's Jay Beckdorf feed looking for Johnson. Sticked away. Scantleberry to Johnson. Head up, gives to Freeborn straight away. Johnson from the Scott. He scores. Alex Johnson from the goal line. And the Prowlers convert on the five on three. Three straight for Port Huron and they take the lead. And they'll still have a minute 38 of power play time to work with. 11th of the year for Alex Johnson, sixth on the man advantage. The Prowlers able to set things up quickly and leave themselves plenty of time on the five on four, which LaBelle will fire it all the way down. Prowlers keep this man advantage unit out there. This is the first time this season the Prowlers have held a lead against the Danbury Hattricks. They of course didn't lead in their four nothing loss here, but also made a three goal comeback. They were down three nothing in the other game here in December. And now fired all the way down, two Hattricks leading the way as Wallace rims it up and he finds Alex Johnson. Pass was behind Scantleberry. Little miscommunication. Here comes Falanga short-handed. Backhand. Glove saved by Wallace. And he'll cover it up. What a save from Ian Wallace to keep the Prowlers on top. And 
That is a huge, huge save as the Prowlers took the momentum with that goal and they almost just lost it. There's a little miscommunication there on the pass from Johnson to Scantleberry is behind him and Scantleberry and Freeborn had a little miscommunication going for that puck. Falanga took it the other way and Prowlers can tap their goaltender and give him a big thanks. There's Tristan Sim over the line. The Prowlers switch up the power play unit. 30 seconds left on the man advantage. It's Federley down to Foley. Back up high to Austin Federley. Tecumbus works down the wall. Federley to Sim. Down to Tecumbus. One timer in front. I think that was a little shot pass. He had Graham and Foley there around the blue paint. Couldn't find either of their sticks though. Back in, Sim, wrist shot, stopped by McCullum. And he'll hold it in the catching glove for a whistle with seven seconds left on the penalty to Daniel McKittrick. Typically a forward, Daniel McKittrick actually playing defense here tonight. Of course the Hattricks have two defensemen suspended and Steve Brown unavailable tonight so that's three defensemen unavailable so having to put McKittrick back there Scantleberry digging in the corner back to five on five Scantleberry turns it in towards the slot now Freeborn sends it around Merritt up the wall towards Schumacher he'll dump it back deep knocked down by LaBelle Scantleberry holding it up in the corner Merritt came in to support Scantleberry and Henning battling. And LaBelle able to work it out. Stops up and turns the other way. Up towards Harwell out of his reach. But Harwell gets it right back on his stick. Lully stepped on the puck. And the Prowlers able to work out. And then Chartrand tripped, uh, tripped over the red line as he dumped it in. Chartrand coming flying in, forcing McCollum to move it. Pops out to Decumbus, working the red line from from there, he missed it high. Johnson down the boards, got through to Cumbus. Abdella rims it up the wall. Heinzel and Berry digging for it. Abdella will try the far side. Woolley and Johnson get there together. Abdella back on it again. Poked away from him. Foley out high to Heinzel. Winds, fires, deflected. And it goes wide. There's a piece of something behind the net. There's some piece of plastic behind the net. I don't know why they blew the whistle. Looks like something belonging to Xavier Abdella's skate, so he'll get an early exit. That's our second broken skate of the period. We had Liam Freeborn losing his skate blade, and now Xavier Abdella lost another piece of his skate. Again, not sure why they blew it dead, but either way, the Prowlers will have an offensive zone face-off. I think Chris Paulin is asking for an explanation on why they blew that play dead. The puck went one way and a piece of plastic that looked a little bit like a puck went another, so maybe the, they got a little confused, weren't sure what was going on and just blew it dead to recollect everything. Faceoff bounces past Johnson. He's able to keep it ahead of him, though. And Graham will fire it to the near side corner where Federley is. He's taken down by Tetro. It's rimmed up past Ratcliffe. Heinzel collects it. Center with 90 seconds to go in period one. Heinzel again fires a pass up to Federley. He's dumped by Tetro from behind right in front of the... Prowler's bench and Heinzel is jumping on Tetro. They wrestle each other to the ice. Tetro had a clean hit on Austin Federley in the corner earlier in the shift, but that one in front of the Prowler's bench, he's going to get whistled for. The arm went up immediately as he knocked Federley from behind. Of course, Adam Heinzel returned to the Prowler's lineup after an injury last time the team, two teams were here. And right off the faceoff, he and Zach Pamaleon drop the mitts. He and Tetra will both go to the boxes. We'll see if 
Those two even up and then Tetro's original call stands or if Heinzel's just going to get a call that evens things up. That's the big question here right now with a minute 18 to go in period one. Right now on my penalty sheet, it's saying fighting to Adam Heinzel, which makes me believe they'll give fighting both ways. But up on the board here, it says two minutes on either side. Uh, it looks like that will even things up. I think that might be wrong, the fighting, because we have two minutes up on either side, and it looks like they're changing them to roughing now. And we will play four on four for the rest of this first period and into the second, save for another penalty. They give Heinzel and Tetro two minutes each for roughing. As Jay's quick shot off the draw, doesn't find the twine as here comes LaBelle cycling it to Ruiz and now McKittrick works it up to LaBelle. That trick's working, pass off for Cunningham. He's taken in by Merritt, Cunningham down on his knees on top of the puck. Merritt kicked it along, Ruiz pulls it out of the pile. To the point, LaBelle back to Ruiz, his shot eaten up by a stick and flies out of play with 46.8 up on the clock. And now they've announced it here as Heinzel for roughing, Tetro for boarding. And that is how things even up. Both teams make some changes, Federley and Harwell. We'll take this base off to Ian Wallace's left. Poked along in the faceoff circle, comes to Ratcliffe, turning, couldn't find a shooting lane. Now he sends it towards the net, and it's blocked by Young. Freeborn waits, gives to Johnson, and gets it right back with 27. On to Federley, just hopped over his stick. Ratcliffe turning, gives to Frank Steinway, number 26. The celebrity contract, that one's chipped out of play. Steinway, who works here in the office here in Danbury, did play four seasons in the NA3HO with the Louisiana Drillers. 89 points in 193 games, not too shabby. And he's getting the celebrity deal here tonight as they'll redo this faceoff. And Vinny DeCumbus will come in for Matt Graham. One back by the hat tricks. It comes over to LaBelle. Fires it in. Gloved by Wallace. And he'll hang on to it with 5.9. So, of course, this 4-4 four four again will spill into the second period. Big face-off here. Graham able to win it back. Schumacher claps it around the wall, and that's going to do it for an entertaining first period. Prowlers head to the locker room with a 3-2 lead. Patrick's had the first two. Prowlers with the last three. And that is your score heading into the first intermission. Shots on goal favoring the Prowlers 10-7 in that opening period, and they take the 3-2 lead into the locker room. Well, coming up on our first intermission report, the Continental catch-up. All that went on in the week that the Prowlers were off. And there was a lot that went on, including some controversial goals in Motor City with the Columbus River Dragons and the Motor City Rockers. We had some craziness going on with the Thunderbirds, Zydeco, and Bobcats as well. And we'll review it all in this week's Continental Catcher. We'll also take a look at some storylines around the FBHL, which we'll talk about what happened yesterday. I'm sure many of you know about what happened yesterday in Baton Rouge. And it, well, not exactly in Carolina, but involving the Thunderbirds and a bus. If you don't know what's going on, we'll give you more details. It's all coming up in the first intermission report.
Well, it's springtime, so get something new in your closet at the Port Huron Prowlers Team Store. Store features lace-up sweatshirts, mitts dolls, team issue apparel, and more. With new merch coming in all season long. Come find us on the west end of McMoran Arena at every home game or online anytime at ProwlersMerch.com. You can scan the QR code on your screen now to visit the online shop. Look your poho best with gear from the Prowlers Team Store. 3-2 Prowlers through 20 minutes here in Danbury. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession for your giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. Then I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor, and this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Pepperoni Duo, a delicious combination of classic cut pepperoni, original pepperoni, 100% mozzarella cheese, and our famous flavored crust. Two kinds of pepperoni, all kinds of delicious. Hungry Howie's! Keep up with your Prowlers all season long on social media. Follow us on Facebook at the Port Huron Prowlers, Instagram at PH Prowlers, and Twitter at PH Prowlers. And you can find more information on our website, phprowlers.com. got a ticket from phprowlers.com. I should have just bought tickets at phprowlers.com. I got it! I should have just got a ticket at phprowlers.com. I should have got a ticket at phprowlers.com. They should have just got tickets at phprowlers.com.
Koch on the backhand out top. Stoya, shot blocked by Frazee. That one pinballs in front and they score. Koch knocked off it by Oaks as he was held up from behind. Martin hops on it with six, with five, with four, with three, with two, with one. Score! He Score! did it! He Score! did it! Score! Danny Martin at the buzzer has won it in overtime! I don't believe it! Board below the goal, sends it back out, top of the zone. It's over to Pistuka, drops it back for Bonacic. 17 to go on the power play for Carolina. Here's a centering pass, the lock scores! Here's Ford across the Thunderbirds logo. He's got Kramer to the outside. Kramer centers to Ford. He scores! <laughs> Circles, fires it out to Firth, near side to Kramer. Kramer centers and they score! <laughs> Jacob Schnapp with the tip in on the far side, his 15th this season. Larwood ahead for MJ Graham. Graham trying to drop it out top, faked it, set it in front, they score. Larwood put it home, and it's 3-0 Baton Rouge. Ford wide, slap pass, tattered, back to Ford out top. Ford, Daly, one-timer, score! Justin Daly, his first goal back on the power play. Welcome it's 2 Down for Babenko, he'll cycle it. Ivashkin. Rep special score! <laughs> Larwood lost the handle. Ivashkin for Tattered. Now Babenko waits in front. Score! Sakina Ivashkin has done it again. It's 5 2.
Comes out to McDonald. McDonald with a stretch on the left side. Now here's room for Hunter moving it as more in. Hunter with a shot. And that one stopped by Babin. Rebound was sitting right in front. No, a goal. That was in. Hunter rings it off the inside bar. What a shot by Ryan Hunter. Yeah, connecting, getting good looks, even though they are just pushed just a little wide. They are on target, there's one in front. TJ Delaney deflecting a Josh Colton shot from the outside. Good bank pass back to Giuliano. That's what you like to see. Giuliano will break the icing. It allows Motor City to also change out players. Centering attempt. Go! Oh, shot! Go! Free wings for everybody! Here's McDonald up top of the slot with a shot through traffic. Save Babin rebound. Backhand in front. They score. Just 18 seconds into the hockey game. It's Alex Storjahan with the power play goal. And the River Dragons are rolling. It's 1-0. Hunter with a shot from the off angle, save made, rebound, the jam away side of the net and the left pad saved by Babbitt. Quick line out quickly, cross ice, Hunter shot, score! Welcome back to Danbury. They're wrapping up the first intermission and it's the Prowlers with a 3-2 lead over the Danbury Hat Tricks. Will Wiggleman back with you on the PHP Network. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And before we take a look back at that opening period, we will take a look at our out of town scoreboard as there are four other games scheduled tonight in the FPHL. We start in Elmira where the Elmira River Sharks have just extended their lead. It is now three to one over the Binghamton Black Bears. That came in the second period, so bit of, bit of a surprise there as the River Sharks are taming the Bears here tonight. And one of the newest River Sharks, Dominic Dumas, has a goal in that one. In Frazier, Michigan, the Motor City Rockers have a two nothing lead on the Blue Ridge Bobcats in period number two. Josh Colton and Scott Coash had the goals. Coash with a goal and a helper. Danny Vanderweel, a couple of assists for Motor City. And meanwhile, in Biloxi, Mississippi, the River Dragons all over the Seawolves, four to nothing in the opening period. Four different goal scorers 
for Columbus. Austin Doe has three assists and a goal already. A four point night for him. And that game is yet to be 20 minutes old. Finally, the Baton Rouge Zydeco and the Carolina Thunderbirds will drop the puck in just moments in Baton Rouge. And from what I'm told, the Thunderbirds have their full team down there with them to take on the Zydeco looking for revenge after last night's loss. Keeping it around the FBHO, look at some storylines around the league and we start with that loss for Carolina last night. Well, their bus broke down on the way to Baton Rouge. They couldn't get vans. They tried to get a charter bus, but the charter company didn't come through for them. They ended up getting as many plane tickets as they could, which was six. Sent Gus Ford, Joe Kennedy, Tucker Firth, John Batita, and Dawson Baker, along with Cody Karpinski. And then Joe Pace to the rescue. He took Dominic Matanak along with him, and then they signed a few others in the Baton Rouge area. Pieced together a team and ended up coming just short, falling five to three to the Zydeco. That's amidst much turmoil in the Mississippi organization as Yanni Liarakos was suspended indefinitely. So if you're counting at home, that is head coach Joe Pace, who has stepped down as well as assistant coach Yanni Liarakos, who's suspended indefinitely and then released after an internal investigation found that he violated his contract. And that was from a statement made by Barry Soskin the owner of not only the Seawolves, but also the Prowlers and a few other teams in the FBHL. Finally for the Motor City Rockers, Ling King making his Rockers debut tonight after he was activated. He was, his rights were acquired from the Columbus River Dragons in January, started the year in the SPHL with the Macon Mayhem. Turn our attention back to tonight's game. It's a 3-2 Prowlers lead. They have the goal that is currently giving them the lead. That came out a five on three power play from Alex Johnson. And that was a big one. So three, two Prowlers lead. They also won the shots battle 10 to seven. And the hat tricks and Prowlers both spending some time in the box. But again, that five on three, really a difference maker for the Prowlers as they made the comeback, tied things up, and then get the go-ahead goal on the five on three as both teams are taking the ice. And it's time for our PHP Network trivia question. And I was a little bit worried when I was writing this that I might jinx it and it might happen again, but luckily the Prowlers put up three in the first, so I don't have to worry about that. Connor McCollum is the only goaltender to shut out the Prowlers this season. Who is the last Prowlers goaltender to post a shutout? Put your guess in the comments and we'll give you the correct answer ahead of period number three. I was also concerned that I would be ruining a Prowlers goaltender shutout with this question, but luckily no superstitions because both teams score in that opening period and I am absolved of any wrongdoing, at least in that department, of course, I'm certainly not absolved of lots of other wrongdoing that might go on. Anyways, Ian Wallace getting set in the goal crease to our left, five saves on seven hat tricks shots, while Connor McCullum set in the goal crease to our right. He made seven saves on 10 Prowler shots in that opening 20 minutes. We're still four on four for 41 seconds as we begin period number two here in that city. And it's Josh LaBelle with the first touch. He'll reverse it behind the net to Ratcliffe. Comes back to LaBelle. And Ratcliffe again harassed by Chartrand. Turned it over. Foley to the point. Johnson settles things down. He'll wrap it around towards Foley. Got through him. Young with a pinch. Chipped by him. And now LaBelle trying to send Ruiz on his way. Passed too far in front. And ends up rolling on Ian Wallace. Who will scoop it up for a whistle and a face off. So both teams will switch things up 12 seconds 
left on the four on four. Merritt and Harwell in on this face off. Comes to the wall and chipped out. Federley after it, gets past McKittrick. Federley one hands it and it's stopped by McCullum. Now Schumacher trying to get it back deep. McKittrick made a pass, it's taken away by the Prowlers. LaBelle up towards Barry, cut off by Federley. Now on to Matt Graham. Back the other direction come the hat tricks. Barry rubbed off by Schumacher and now Graham back in. Dangles around McKittrick. Graham recollects the puck behind the net. Try to centering feed, ends up out high to Parsons. Wrist shot off the bar. A seeing eye wrist shot catches the iron. Right through all the traffic. Patrick's just do work the puck out before it's tipped right back in by the Prowlers. Prowlers looking to build on the strong ship. Turnaround try by Chartrand ends up in the corner. Deck pinching in, keeps the puck alive. Falenga tries to start a breakout. Dumped out by Zinchenko as he's dumped to the ice by Alex Johnson. Deck watched by Falenga, leaves it behind the net for Scantleberry to skate into. He heads up ice. Steps around Falanga. He's taken down. Play continues. As Stoichevsky fired it off of Falanga's feet. And now Zinchenko stepping around deck from the outside right into the chest of Ian Wallace. And he'll hang on for a whistle and a faceoff with 17.45 left to go in period number two. Uh, Scantleberry looked like he was tripped up there by Michael Falanga, but the referees disagreeing with that, so they do not call anything, and we play on. Tied up there at the dot, Schumacher plays it to the wall where Ruiz scoops it up. Ratcliffe cycles it deep, Foley behind the net. Now Cunningham flies in and takes it towards Ratcliffe, had to kick it up to his stick. Gets it to the point, heading towards the net, deflected by Ruiz. To Cumbus, down to Foley. Behind the net, Heinzel, kicked along by Schumacher. He finds Sim. Prowlers work up three on two if they hurry. Foley with the shot right into McCullum. And he'll hang on for a whistle and a faceoff. Foley picked his head up. Looked for a pass, but when he couldn't find one, he decided to put it on net. Prowler's getting an offensive zone face off, and Matt Graham is going to have to find a new twig. Lead on his stick just a little too hard. And Tucker Scantleberry will head out for this draw with Sam Merritt and Austin Federley. I think Graham had to head back to the locker room for a new stick. It's a bit of a mixed line out there. They have Scantleberry, who's on the third line. Federley, who's on Matt Graham's line. And Sam Merritt is listed as the extra forward tonight. Centering feed knocked away by Merritt. Federley looks to turn it the other direction. Flip pass, lands on the stick of Tetro. They'll rim it up. Touched along by Berry and Harwell. Lops it in. Johnson waits for it to fall. He and Tetro come together in the corner. Pops back up in the air. Took a hop off the dasher. And now Harwell to the point. Got past LaBelle. Jay hustling after him. LaBelle able to muscle him off. They turned over the puck. Prowlers have numbers. Merritt tried to pass. A good stick by Tetro. And now it's Danbury's turn with numbers. Young drop pass. And a pass across to Woolley was behind him. A couple of odd man rushes, no shots for either side on those opportunities. Young trying to work his way out in front. Knocked to the corner by Chartrand. They dig away. Young to the point, McKittrick. Backhands it deep. 
Young tried to work it up, Stoichevsky right there on it. Now McKittrick across, and LaBelle's one-timer didn't get all of it. There's a stickless Dan Chartrand. His stick is sitting over here on the near side. So Prowlers couldn't get it out. LaBelle shot blocked by Chartrand. LaBelle again, his pass blocked again by Dan Chartrand. Chartrand's without a stick. He just plays it with his glove and able to work it in deep to get off for a change. Great shift by Dan Chartrand without his lumber. Penalty coming up against the Prowlers and looks like too many men on the ice is the call. So Danbury will go to its first power play of the night. And the Prowlers giving the ninth ranked power play in the FPHL an opportunity that went one for five in the last game against Binghamton. As the Prowlers trot out the last ranked penalty kill in the league at 70.3%. Up the face off, it comes behind the net. Schumacher chasing after it, gets it to Graham on the wall, but he couldn't chop it out. Good play by Ratcliffe. Now Merritt able to fire it to Danbury territory. Fed up to Ruiz. Ruiz stepping around Parsons. Now Three hat tricks able to pull that puck out of the pile. Here's Ratcliffe to Ruiz. The hat trick set up down deep. Harwell stopped by Wallace in tight. Cunningham to the top to Ratcliffe. Ruiz wants the one timer. He fires it high and wide. Takes a hop off the stanchion and goes out to center ice. Cunningham back in. Harwell rims it up to Woolley. And now Ruiz. Down to Harwell, another in tight save by Wallace on Chase Harwell. Here's Ratcliffe, across to Woolley, lost an edge, able to get to Ruiz, back to Ratcliffe. 40 seconds left on the Prowlers, penalty kill. Ratcliffe across the one-timer by Cunningham, stopped by Wallace. Ruiz out high to Woolley. Ratcliffe, down to Ruiz, catch and shoot, and he scores! Johnny Ruiz, one-timer on the power play, ties things up at three. Team high 29th of the year for Ruiz. He's on an eight-game point streak. And the Patricks get one back. It's also team high eighth power play goal of the year for Johnny Ruiz. And now the net is being dislodged. And, and both referees taking a look at the net. It's, Seems to be sliding relatively easy, so we'll see what they can do to work with the pegs here. And now some of the maintenance crew here at Danbury Ice Arena coming out to take a look. It seemed like a matter of time for the Hattricks. Prowlers didn't really get much in the way of clears during that power play. Just one off the Ruiz, one timer that went high and wide and another one right at the beginning. You tired penalty killers out there for the Prowlers. We have a 3-3 game, 13-31 to go in period number two. That was the third shot of the man advantage for Dan Barry. Thanks for your listening pleasure. While the door is being repaired, we have a little trouble. And we talked about it 
just before this period began how power plays can change momentum. It worked for the Prowlers. They got the go-ahead goal in that first period on the man advantage. But then here in the second, the Patricks able to tie the game up on the man advantage themselves. Denberry one for one on the power play tonight. Prowlers one for two on the man advantage. They bring out the fire extinguisher. All right, welcome. The Hair Hacker Group, the Hair Hacker Group is here. So more of a delay here before this face-off. Both teams hanging out. We'll take a timeout. You're watching Port here on Browers Hockey on the PHP Network. I'm proud to serve farmers because everything they do matters. If I could choose one word to describe a farmer, I would say essential. Dedicated. Enterprising. The most creative people. They're providing food for the rest of the world. Some of the qualities I look for uh, when hiring is personality, perseverance, someone that's determined. We want to be able to hire someone that understands what we're supporting, and ultimately that's the grower. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowler's home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab, or call the box office at 810 985 Oh, cut you back to hockey as we're set to go once again. Three all. As that puck is knocked into the hat tricks bench, so we'll get another whistle and another face off. We'll get another face off back at center ice. They're calling it Ruiz from Connor Woolley, the game tying goal. Just about six and a half minutes into period number two. And the back and forth game continues. There is Ruiz falling as he shot that one off the glove of Wallace. Johnson backhands it out. Graham on for Merritt. Drop pass. Graham and Ratcliffe got there together. Ruiz able to send it up. Cunningham over, skated it. Graham touches it for Merritt. Ruiz knocked it away from him. Rimmed around, Ratcliffe. Just slides it out, Dalton J first on it. Parsons, back to J. Tried to give it to Chartrand, taken away by Ratcliffe. Here's Cunningham with a shot off the post. And backhanded out by Matt Graham. It will die short of the icing line. Dustin Henning plays it up, gives it right to Dalton Jay. Jay around the net, centering feed, knocked away. Abdella goes off the glass and out. Frank Schumacher, taken down to the ice by Berry. Comes back to Frank Schumacher as he's on his skates again. Now here's Shirtrand, getting the red line, try to dump it in. Parsons makes a move, gets into offensive territory. Trying to slide it all the way across. Scantleberry got a shot off. It pinballs around, and McCullum's on top of it for a whistle and a face-off. And now it looks like we will go to our timeout. 11.53 to go in period two. We'll take a, take a quick break, and we'll come back. From more hockey from Danbury. I'm proud to serve farmers because everything they do matters. If I could choose one word to describe a farmer, I would say essential. Dedicated. Enterprising. The most creative people. They're providing food for the rest of the world. Some of the qualities I look for uh, when hiring is personality, 
perseverance, someone that's determined. We want to be able to hire someone that understands what we're supporting, and ultimately that's the grower. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowler's home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab or call the box office at 810-985-6166. Secure your seats today. 11.53 to go in period number two. Prowlers and Hattricks tied up at three. They just announced there's an indoor soccer team coming to Danbury. That's it's exciting. Lots going on here at Danbury Ice Arena. For me, my old stomping grounds. I used to play here in Danbury a lot growing up. Here's Dalton J turning it around with a shot off the stick of LaBelle. And now it's McCullum's turn to knock the net off. And see, it's not just an Ian Wallace problem. See if they do something between the second and third periods to fix the pegs a little bit better than they have. Face off coming to McCollum's right. Now Sim, back pass in front, saved by McCollum on Evan Foley, highway robbery from the Hattricks netminder. Connor McCollum in the splits, able to rob Evan Foley as Tristan Sim turned a back pass in front of the net. That line stays out there for the Prowlers. Falenga able to win the faceoff, but Tecumbus takes it back. Falenga off the glass, and now it's Young working in, but his pass to Stoyshevsky knocked away by Schumacher and right into the catching glove of Ian Wallace. So right off that face off, another funny hop in what looks to be some kind of a Zamboni door over on the far side, down to our right in the corner. It looks like a secondary Zamboni door because the Zamboni actually comes out of the near side corner that you can see on your screen. But there is a garage door over there, as if a Zamboni did come out of there at one time. But either way, it's caused some funny bounces tonight. Here's Federley back in, saucing it across, looking for Heinzel. He'll send it deep to Merritt, who keeps it moving. Stoichepski, though, takes it for Danbury. Buck stays in for a moment. Henning skates into it. He'll get the red line. So send it in, and he misses everything, so... That one hits the wrong netting and will bring the faceoff back outside of the Prowler zone, I believe. And indeed, the faceoff will come just outside of Hattrick's territory. That's no longer football season, but I guess you could say that's a good field goal for Dustin Henning. Cantleberry and Harwell getting set for this face-off. Now everybody all set to go. Heading off the boards. Set in, Harwell and Berry on it. Berry turnaround shot, I think that may have hit Dalton Young on the way through. Puck sliding to the middle of the ice, diving play by Scantleberry to get it out of danger. Abdella sends it back around. Young tried to tip it along, shot from the outside, misses wide, and caroms all the way back to Hat Trick's territory. Abdella off the backboards to Tetro, long lead pass 
looking for a Woolley behind everyone. It was blocked by Johnson. And now a high stick being called against the Prowlers. So Danbury, one for one on the man advantage so far. And we're going, going back to a true balance penalty kill for the Prowlers. Dan Chartran, the one to the box. He's a penalty killer and we'll see if it is two or four minutes. See if they put up on the clock. Tetro was chatting with the referees and it is a four minute double minor for high sticking against Dan Chartrand. And after the Danbury power play was successful earlier, they'll get four full minutes to work here. It's LaBelle and McKittrick playing catch up top. Ruiz back to LaBelle. Harwell and Cunningham causing havoc in front. Ruiz one timer right into the chest of Ian Wallace for a whistle and a face off. We will take a timeout. Long PK ahead of the Prowlers. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHB Network. left of power play time for the Danbury Hattricks as Dan Shirtrand sits a two minute or four minute double minor for high sticking and Danbury with a chance to regain the lead already one for one on the power play so far and the man who scored that power play goal here in the second period is taking the face off it's Ruiz Cunningham Harwell LaBelle and McKittrick still out there Prowlers have Merritt, Foley, Heinzel, and Johnson right now on the PK. Comes over to McKittrick. He'll rim it around to Cunningham. Centering feed stopped by Wallace. The puck was a little bit loose, but the referee lost sight of it, so they blew it dead. It was Chase Harwell banging away at the top of the crease, and Ian Wallace, who made a couple of in tight saves on Harwell on the first power play for Danbury comes up big again Prowlers switch up the PK forwards Matt Graham and Vinny DeCumbis stepping out everyone else stays the same on both sides Ruiz wins this face off and now Harwell to McKittrick sends it down deep looking for Cunningham hopped over his stick Johnson's clearing attempt, stopped by McKittrick. He walks in, gets to the outside, sends it up to Cunningham, and now LaBelle at the top. Back to Cunningham. McKittrick, try to return feed to Cunningham. Now LaBelle to Ruiz, down to Harwell, just lost the handle. Prowlers can't clear though. Harwell again, cross ice speed, McKittrick a shot, rose high. Ruiz to the center, Cunningham. Tried to turn it in front. Now a centering feed from McKittrick. Missed the net again. This time Decumbus able to pick it up. And he sends it the length of the ice and the Prowlers finally able to get a big change. A minute and a half gone on the Danbury power play. They have two shots so far. And a couple of near misses as well. Woolley fires it across to Ratcliffe. Woolley again. They have Zinchenko lined up in the slot. Falenga on the far side. And now with the puck is Stoyshevsky. Here five now for Danbury. 
Falanga. Watched by Parsons. Out high to Woolley. Wrist shot. Didn't get all the way through, I don't think. And now Stojczewski. Falanga took the puck. Gave it away to Dalton J, who fires at the length of the ice. Prowlers have killed off the first minor. And now a minute 45 left on the second of the double minor to Dan Chartrand. Zinchenko turned it to the near side corner. Foley on it. Will only get it to the line, but then Scantleberry with a good stick gets in front of a pass to poke it out to center. Ruiz working back in. Gives it to the outside to Ratcliffe. Back towards Ruiz, rims it around. Johnson finds Schumacher. He pulls it away from Ruiz, finds Scantleberry, who fires it through McKittrick and down ice. Minute 10 to go on the penalties to Dan Chartrand. McKittrick gets into offensive territory. Patrick set up once more. Here's LaBelle. Over to McKittrick, gives it back. The bell is shot right on, blocked by Graham, and now Decumbus moving the other way, trying to get a step on LaBelle, who got back in good enough time, so Decumbus sent it around deep. McKittrick gives it to Cunningham, slows up, and now the quick pass up to McKittrick. Looked like it hit something on the ice and bumped up in the air. LaBelle down to Harwell. McKittrick up to LaBelle. Walks, finds McKittrick again. LaBelle, wrist shot in and out of the glove of Wallace. Ends up over on the wall. Falenga behind the net, centering feed. Couldn't find a friendly stick and it rolls back to Hattrick's territory. And the Prowlers with a big PK, killing off all four minutes. As we're back to five on five, and now the hat tricks have iced the puck. A tick under six minutes to go in period number two. Four shots on the man advantage for Danbury that spent a lot of time in the Prowler zone, especially early on in that penalty. But the Prowlers stood tall, and they have an opportunity now in offensive territory. With this face off, do you get a chance on Connor McCullum? Here's Parsons walking in from the point. His shot blocked down, and now Young swoops in. He's taken down by Heinzo. Penalty coming for that. Young with a shot kicked out by Wallace, and the Prowlers will go right back to the PK as Adam Heinzo in a last ditch effort to take the puck away from the speedy Young. Finds himself back in the penalty box for the second time tonight. Five nine hundred eighty one pounds for Brendan Young, but he is fast. He had 12 points in 23 games for Wentworth Institute of Technology this season. So that tricks right back to the man advantage. Here's McKittrick to LaBelle, fires a shot blocked by Graham. Chartrand finds it off the glass all the way down. LaBelle left it behind the net, Graham takes it out to Chartrand, his shot off a stick and flies out of play. So Matt Graham able to steal away the drop pass from Josh LaBelle and Get an offensive opportunity for his team and an offensive zone faceoff on the penalty kill. 22 seconds gone in the penalty to Adam Heinzel. Merritt and Ruiz set to take this faceoff. And a bit too quick to jump where Harwell and Foley, so they'll try it again, and this time Ruiz able to win the draw back. And the hat tricks start out. It's Ratcliffe stick handling through center, gets it to Cunningham. Bringed all the way around to Ruiz. Tap back this side, Ratcliffe. 
Got it to the point. McKittrick hustled over to keep it alive. Federley trying to deal with a dropped stick. He does and is able to turn it all the way down. He had three hat tricks around him and a stick on the ground. And still able to fire it to McCullum. We are halfway through the penalty to Heinzel as Ratcliffe works up the right wing side. Drop pass to nobody, but Ruiz keeps it in. His drive stopped by Wallace. It was behind him. They got a quick whistle, but Frank Schumacher was going to push it back into Ian Wallace. So there wasn't going to be any harm, but they do get a quick whistle. We'll take a timeout, and when we come back, 52 seconds left of penalty time to kill for the Prowlers. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor, and this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Pepperoni Duo, a delicious combination of classic cut pepperoni, original pepperoni, 100% mozzarella cheese, and our famous flavored crust. Two kinds of pepperoni, all kinds of delicious. Hungry Howie's. 4.36 to go in the Hungry Howie's second period. Prowler's penalty kill back up with another test. 52 seconds left in it. As we're just waiting for this media timeout to end. Hattricks have one goal on their first three power plays of the period. This is their fourth technically as Dan Chartrand was a double minor. But the Prowlers were able to kill off both of those. Here's Zinchenko to LaBelle. His drive deflected. They score. <laughs> Not sure if that was Zinchenko or Prowler defender that tipped that one in. But it's another power play goal for Danbury. And the Hattricks take back the lead. LaBelle was the one that let it go from the point. If it is indeed his goal, that's his fifth of the year. He came into tonight on a six game point streak with 13 points in that span. And now the Prowlers back to playing from behind. Jay gives it back to Young. Now here's Parsons. Back up to Dalton Young. Head across to Parsons. Off the boards and out. Barry and Chartrand lock up at center. Now it's Tetro trying to fire it up. Here's Dalton J at center to Scantleberry. Fires it around. Chartrand and Tetro. Trying to get there together. Took a funny hop off the door. Tetro fires it out all the way down. Young will win the race to negate the icing. They do indeed give the goal to LaBelle. And Zinchenko picking up the assist. Chartrand trying to move ahead. It's chopped back the other direction. Now Chartrand sends Scantleberry in, has Jay joining him. Scantleberry had it poked out of his reach by Tetro. And now Young looking to move out. He left the puck behind, backed up by Henning. Trying to fight through Schumacher who gives it to Federley. On to Freeborn. Three minutes to go in period number two. Federley backhander gloved and held by McCullum. He'll hang on for a whistle and a face-off. Few ticks under three minutes left in this second period. Hattricks have the only two of the frame and 
Both of them coming on the power play. And that is why they're in front 4-3. Chopped in by Cunningham. Wallace grabs it behind the net, fires it around. Ruiz burst on it, sent it back towards the cage. And the net came up. It's Moorings as Wallace was fighting his way back to the crease. And they'll fix the net again. on the net, Wallace and Alex Johnson having a conversation. Faceoff will stay inside the Prowler zone and they were not able to change on this. Graham wins it forward, looking towards Freeborn, but it's turned over. Here's McKittrick off the post. Another post for Danbury. Prowlers work into offensive territory, but Abdella takes it. Federally just couldn't keep it in. Now Schumacher jumps the pass, gives it to Federley who had to glove it down. LaBelle came back for it. Up to Cunningham. Fires it across, Ruiz with a shot stopped by Wallace. And Graham collects the rebound. On to Federley as Freeborn breaking, got it there. And Freeborn backhands it in softly to the corner, Graham and Henning get there together. Harwell up the wall. Gives it to Woolley, return feed Harwell. Couldn't get a good shot away as Wallace was right in on him. May have gotten in too tight. That puck goes right through the blue paint. Now Henning in deep, taken in by the rookie Braden Deck. Parson steps out. Finds Vinny Decumbus. Decumbus dumps it in. Sim after it along with Woolley. And now Ratcliffe takes it. Cross ice feed on Henning's stick. Bounces it in. Tetro first on it in the corner. Tetro and Parsons lock up. Now Zinchenko, wrist shot towards the net. In and out of the glove of Wallace. And he'll clamp. The big catching glove on top for a whistle and a face off with 58.2 seconds left to go in period number two. Prowlers are up 3-2 at the beginning of this period. But they've given Danbury numerous opportunities on the man advantage. Hattricks have taken advantage with two power play goals. They now have the 4-3 lead. Danbury leading on shots 15-7 in this period and 22-17 for the game. Chartrand up to Jay. Tried to touch it around. Abdella stood up there though. Zinchenko to Young. One-timer couldn't find the target. And Chartrand will start the counter. Three on two if they hurry. Scantleberry tried to slip through Falanga. Couldn't do it. Short trend, tried to push it on net. Now Falanga just recollecting his stick. Found the puck come to him. He backhands it out. Puck rolls down and I think I may have hit the bleachers that hang over the glass. So with 19 and a half seconds left, we'll get a stoppage. I think the Prowlers want a delay of game penalty but they'll say it was deflected. That feels like a little bit of a gray area. Those bleachers do hang over right about where the glass is. Not sure if they do hang over the glass entirely or not. Off the faceoff, Freeborn shot to net was blocked. Federley also had one blocked by Tetro. Chartre, or Schumacher, excuse me, back out. Freeborn to Graham with five. Backhands it towards the net, kicked out by McCollum. And it's chipped out and that's going to do it. 
for 40 minutes of play. Here in Danbury, Hattricks get two on the man advantage in the middle frame, and they have a four to three lead heading into the second intermission. Shots on goal in that period, favoring the Hattricks. 16 to seven. Hattricks also had the advantage for the game, 23 to 17. And we've seen a lot here tonight. Lots of goals in that opening period. And Denbury taking advantage of the power play here in the second. Both teams with some power play goals here tonight. As they head off to the locker rooms, a one goal game heading into period number three. And that is you know, really where the Prowlers like to be at this point against Danbury. It's closer than the score was the last two times these two these teams played here in Danbury. The Hattricks had multi-goal leads heading into the third. This time, just a one-goal lead for Danbury. As we get set for third period play coming up in just a few minutes. But coming up in the second intermission, we chat about the game so far. All the goals, all the saves, all the power plays, and everything else going on. We'll also take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Prowlers. Spoiler alert, home games. They're coming, I swear. And there are a lot of them this month. You'll get your first taste of that. And we'll also take a look at the out of town scoreboard, game stats, and much, much more. It's all coming up in the second intermission. Once again, the Prowlers, Charlie Hatchets, four to three. To secure your seats for the Prowlers' next home game as they host the Blue Ridge Bobcats for the very first time on Friday, March 8th with puck drop at McLaurin play scheduled for 7.05 p.m. Tickets are available online at phprowlers.com slash tickets by phone at 810-985-6166 or by scanning the QR code on your screen now. That's online at phprowlers.com slash tickets by phone at 810-985-6166 or scan the QR code on your screen now to experience Prowlers hockey live and in person at the old barn, Nick Bourne plays the way it was meant to be enjoyed. And you also get to be the first to see the Blue Ridge Bobcats live and in person at Nick Bourne Place. A first ever matchup between the FPHL's two cats. We'll see who wins the Battle of the Cats. And you'll be able to catch it live at Nick Bourne Place. They're playing March 8th and 9th, that March 9th game is the, taking a shot at breast cancer night as well. So get your tickets for that weekend. As a couple of great games, plus a Sunday matchup with the Watertown Wolves. So you can get your tickets now and skip the line at phfrowlers.com slash tickets. 4-3 hat tricks through 40 minutes here in Danbury. And when we come back, we'll tell you exactly what went down in those opening 40 minutes and get you set for the third. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession for your giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. And I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor, and this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. 
Introducing his latest master pizza, the Pepperoni Duo. A delicious combination of classic cut pepperoni, original pepperoni, 100% mozzarella cheese, and our famous flavored crust. Two kinds of pepperoni, all kinds of delicious. Hungry? Howie's! Keep up with your Prowlers all season long on social media. Follow us on Facebook at the Port Huron Prowlers, Instagram at PH Prowlers, and Twitter at PH Prowlers. And you can find more information on our website, phprowlers.com. got a ticket from phprowlers.com. I should have just bought tickets at phprowlers.com. I got it! I should have just got a ticket at phprowlers.com. I should have got a ticket at phprowlers.com. They should have just got tickets at phprowlers.com. Welcome back to Danbury. They are cleaning up the chuck -a pucks here at Danbury Ice Arena. And it's the Danbury Hat Tricks with a 4-3 lead over the port here on Prowlers. Will Wiggleman back with you on the PHP Network. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And well, the issue for the Prowlers in that second period, penalties. As they had three guys sitting in the box at different points in that second period. They took the too many men on the ice penalty that Johnny Ruiz scored on that tied the game. They killed off Dan Chartrand's high sticking double minor, but then Adam Heinzel's tripping penalty led to a Josh LaBelle goal that made it 4-3 Danbury. But really five on five, the Prowlers have looked like the better team at times in this game and for long portions of this game. They showed that in the first period after getting punched in the mouth in the first period after Danbury scored two goals in 55 seconds, I want to say, if my math is correct. Prowlers came back and then, Prowlers came back in less than two minutes later, or just over two minutes later, they came back and scored two of their own in a minute and 28 seconds to tie the game and then they got a power play late in that period 
to take the lead. The Prowlers have been getting it done pretty well at five on five. The teams are actually tied at five on five with two goals apiece, and those are the first four goals of the game from then on. It's been all power plays, and really the key, I guess, here in the third period will be to stay out of the box because if you can do that, then Prowlers have shown they've been able to neutralize the hat tricks attack pretty well at times so far, but with all the time spent shorthanded, the Prowlers only got seven shots on Connor McCullum. Now, he did have to make a big, big save on Evan Foley at one point during that period, but other than that, a pretty easy period for McCullum over in the hat tricks net. Prowlers need to make this game a little bit more difficult for him. But we'll see if they can do that here in the third period. Just coming up just about 15 minutes from now. They do put a little extra time on the clock here between periods in Danbury. Lots of intermission shenanigans that go on here. So a little bit of extra time to wait until the third period begins. And maybe that will be a good thing for the Prowlers. Just they can reset, recollect themselves and get back out there because this game and certainly is not over. It's a one goal game. Your goaltender has given you some saves even if the stat line may not show it. Wallace has made some big saves. Talk about that breakaway all the way back in the first period when Michael Falenga came down just after Alex Johnson made it 3-2. Michael Falenga came down on the breakaway when the Browns were still on the power play and Wallace stopped him with the glove and that's turned out to be an important save as this is still just a one goal game. The Prowlers and the Hattricks getting set to do battle in the third period of the first game of a three game weekend between these teams. Prowlers trying to exercise their demons here in Danbury. Winless over their last nine games here. 1-8-2 overall against the Hat Tricks since the start of the 2021-22 season. And they'll also finish up a lengthy stretch this weekend against Empire Division opposition. This is the seventh straight weekend series for the Prowlers against Empire Division opponents dating all the way back to January. The last time the Prowlers faced a Continental Division team was January 5th and 6th when they visited the Carolina Thunderbirds. That feels like, well, months ago because it is. It's nearly two months to the day ago that those games were played. They'll surpass the two month anniversary of those games and then they'll finally face Continental Division opposition again when they face the Blue Ridge Bobcats in two games next weekend, but even then they'll face a, an Empire opponent because they have the Watertown Wolves on Sunday next week. But of course, all of that far into the future, and we'll get into that a little bit more when we look at the upcoming schedule later on in the intermission report. 4-3 hat tricks. So they get set for the third period, and we'll take a break. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHB Network. I've worked at Pioneer and now Corteva for 36 years. It goes by very quickly. This is a pretty noble profession for your giving back to humanity. Curiosity is so important. I learn something new every day. What's that next challenge that may occur for farmers? You do really feel like you've got an impact on what's coming. I can see how we're making things better. And we have the best solutions for our farmers. And I think we're here to feed and fuel the world. I'm proud to be part of that culture and I'm proud to be part of the company.
At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor. And this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Pepperoni Duo. A delicious combination of classic cut pepperoni, original pepperoni, 100% mozzarella cheese, and our famous flavored crust. Two kinds of pepperoni, all kinds of delicious. Hungry? Howie's! Keep up with your Prowlers all season long on social media. Follow us on Facebook at the Port Huron Prowlers, Instagram at PH Prowlers, and Twitter at PH Prowlers. And you can find more information on our website, phprowlers.com. Not even that much better than you. Should have just got a ticket from phprowlers.com. I should have just bought tickets at phprowlers.com. I got it! I should have just got a ticket at phprowlers.com. I should have got a ticket at phprowlers.com. They should have just got tickets at phprowlers.com. Back here in Danbury, second intermission, getting set to wrap up. Prowlers have a little work to do here in the third period, trailing the hat tricks four to three. Will Wiggleman back with you again on the PHP Network, thanks again for tuning in tonight, first of three games between the Hat Tricks and the Prowlers this weekend. But before we take a look back at the numbers from the game so far, let's take a look at the out of town scoreboard. We have one game that's gone final so far, a little bit of an upset as the Elmira River Sharks took down the Binghamton Black Bears six to three behind 31 saves from Sammy Bernard. Dominic Dumas had a goal and an assist, Trevor Newman a couple of helpers, and a big victory for Elmira, and just not Binghamton's night. We'll see if the Black Bears will be able to rebound next time they play. is isn't until a week from today, so they'll have to sit on this one for a little bit as they fall to the fourth place Elmira River Sharks. They're in the third period in Frazier. And the Bobcats have gotten one back from Cody Oaks, still trailing the Motor City Rockers two to one. 
late stages third period. We move on to Biloxi, the River Dragons up 5-1 now on the Mississippi Seawolves as they're wrapping up the middle frame of regulation. And finally, the Carolina Thunderbirds flexing their muscles a little bit. They're at the first intermission up 2-0 on Baton Rouge. The Thunderbirds outshot the Zydeco 16-4 in that opening period. It's Carolina now with their full roster with them and able to play and they are showing that last night maybe it was, maybe it was a little bit of a fluke as they try to continue to hold a big lead on the prowlers for the second spot in the continental division well i promised you home games there they are home games coming up next week for the Prowlers after this three and three. They will not play another game outside the state of Michigan until April. And next week it is the Blue Ridge Bobcats coming in for March 8th and March 9th, the Friday, Saturday. Wartown Wolves will also be at McMoran Place that Sunday. But the Bobcats will be visiting McMoran for the very first time first ever meeting between the Prowlers and the Bobcats and of course March 9th is taking a shot at breast cancer night as well and there are some phenomenal jerseys I'm sure you may have seen them on the Prowler social media or the taking a shot at breast cancer social media the great breast cancer awareness jerseys that we have in store for this season it will be worn a week from tomorrow at McMoran Place and you'll be able to to bid on those jerseys immediately following the game, but you do have to be in attendance. So get your tickets now and skip the line, phprowlers.com slash tickets. Checking out the stats so far from the game. And it's the hat tricks up on shots now, 23 to 17, taking advantage of all the power plays in that middle period. Hattrick's two for four on the man advantage. You can call it two for three if you want to count the double minor as all one, but I call it two because it's two different power plays. So the double minor that the Prowlers did kill off, but they couldn't kill off the other two penalties. And that's the difference so far right now. Teams are even 2-2 at even strength, but Danbury with a 2-1 lead as far as power play goals. And the Prowlers trying to make a comeback here in the third period, they were able to do so the last time these two teams matched up. Hattricks ended up winning 4-3 in overtime, but the Prowlers made a 3-0 comeback in the back half of that third period. We'll see if they can make a one goal comeback here in the third period as both teams are getting set to hit the ice momentarily but before they do we get back to our PHP Network trivia question Connor McCollum the only goaltender to shut out the Prowlers this season who's the last Prowlers goaltender with a shutout well guess what he's in the other net tonight it's Ian Wallace he did back on April 8th of last season right at the end of the year against the Watertown Wolves pitched the shutout Prowlers only gave up one goal in two games that weekend. Brian Tullio started the other one. That was a good weekend for the Prowlers. Their last victories, though, of the 2022-23 season they were swept by these hat tricks the next weekend in what was the final weekend of the regular season. And then they ended up being swept in the first round of the playoffs by the Carolina Thunderbirds. So that shutout win from Ian Wallace turned out to be their last victory of the 2022-23 season. No shutout tonight though for either side as Wallace gets set in the goal crease to our right. He has stopped 19 of 23 hat tricks shots so far. Connor McCullum in the goal crease to our left. 
They stopped 14 of 17 Prowlers shots. As both teams have been able to get pucks through on their limited shots on goal and get them to the back of the net. Some good scoring opportunities for both sides. They've made it tough on both goaltenders despite the low quantity, plenty of quality in these shots. We start the second period four on four. We'll start this one as we did the first. Five on five, no penalties to tell you about. And the final 20 minutes of regulation are underway. And Dustin Henning pulling up. And now Scantleberry pulls it out of the pile. Pulled out by Cunningham. Henning pinches to keep it in. Ruiz behind the net. Tried to come back out on his forehand centering feed. Shot blocked. And now Deck trying to start a counter attack. Here's Dalton J. Works his way to the middle of the ice. And had taken by Ruiz. Scantleberry off the far wall. Ratcliffe chased down by J. Harwell chips it around towards Cunningham. Taken in by Deck. Ratcliffe in the corner, cycles it. And Harwell around to Abdella. Comes back to the near side. Tetro pinches in. Jay able to kick it out. He couldn't get it to his intended target. And Harwell turns it right back in. Working on deck. Harwell got to the net. And Wallace able to stand his ground. Now Barry passed down low. And Harwell couldn't get the stick down in time. Pass all the way across. Woolley gloved by Ian Wallace. Little flash of the leather from number 41 in white. He'll get a whistle and a face off. As Harwell got a good chance coming right back in. He stepped around Braden Deck. I don't think he got a good shot off though. The puck did slip through the blue paint. Wallace stood his ground on that play. And he then made the glove save on Woolley. Off the turnover, here's Barry. All over the puck in the corner. Sent behind the net, back in front looking toward Barry. Schumacher blanketing him. Barry back on it. Around the net, wraparound try. Came all the way through. They will stop play. Looks like the net barely came off. Prowlers won't be able to make a change. So the Prowlers have to keep the same five out there. Hattricks will get a full change. Graham and Falenga set for this faceoff. Off the faceoff, Falenga bats it back to LaBelle. Blocker saved by Wallace on the long range try. Falenga turns it in. There's Parsons to Schumacher. Freeborn made a pass out. That was right on Zinchenko's tape. Schumacher to Graham. Sending to Cumbis in. He gets around McKittrick and gets it deep. Falenga caught up in the referee in the corner. Plays it up the wall. Young able to just keep it in. Sent it towards the net, but it's blocked by LaBelle. Young again, push it up to Foley and gets it back. Young with some time and space, sends a pass to Chartran, who touches it in. McKittrick plays it around, Sim off the bench, able to keep it in momentarily. And Prowler's in a delayed offside situation. I don't think Foley knew it, so he played it behind the net, and that is the reason for the whistle. Prowlers with the first three shots of the period. Hat tricks with the last three. They'll get the face off just outside of Danbury territory. Foley and Ruiz taking the draw. And Foley wins the battle of the captains this time. 
Abdella. Tried to saucer it out. It's Sim intercepting, but he had it knocked away from him. Ruiz trying to work up. Chartrand backhands it in. Here comes Sim. Pulls up in the corner. Ratcliffe tried to work it out. Cunningham on to Ruiz. He dumps it in. Off the corner boards, it comes out to Wallace. Thought about playing it with his stick and sail. Clip the glove on top. And we'll get another whistle, another face off. 16.35 left to go in regulation. Both teams will switch up the units. Prowlers send out that third line. Scantleberry, Jay, and Sam Merritt will line up on the wing. Woolley to take the draw against Scantleberry. Uh, comes to the point to LaBelle. Berry overskated it behind the net. Deck tried to work it up the wall, but right into Woolley. Berry pops out with it. Couldn't get his way to the front of the net. Scantleberry spun his man down. Delayed penalty coming up against Tucker Scantleberry, I believe. Battled for in the corner. McCollum's on the bench for the extra attacker. They finally blow it dead. And Tucker Scantleberry is the guilty party, but he can't believe it. It looks like an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty is coming against Tucker Scantleberry. Scantleberry to the box, hat tricks back to the power play, and that's a dangerous thought as that's exactly how Danbury scored both of their second period goals. We'll see if the Prowlers PK can hold strong here. Here's McKittrick giving it to LaBelle. Wine sends it through. Took all day looking for his target and ended up finding Wallace's blocker. Out high it comes to LaBelle, to McKittrick. Walks, feeds it down to Cunningham. Inside, Harwell, another in tight opportunity, shut down by Ian Wallace. And again on Chase Harwell, as Harwell tried to pull it back to his forehand and go up and over Ian Wallace. So I'll get another face off in Prowler territory. Minute 28 left to go on the penalty to Scantleberry. McKittrick walks down the wall, didn't like what he saw, so he curls back. LaBelle to McKittrick, wrist shot, right into the catching glove again of Ian Wallace. As he flashes the quick glove up high to pull it down. Third shot already for the Hattricks on this power play. 46 seconds gone in it. Prowler's able to win this face off. Federley rims it up the glass. Graham sends Merritt on his way, working on McKittrick. Couldn't dangle by. The other way comes Cunningham. Drops it for LaBelle, sent it down low, and Wallace dives out to cover it up for Whistle. Halfway through the power play for Danbury. They'll switch up the unit. Falanga and Foley for this face off. 15.07 left to go in period three. Ratcliffe gets it back. Gives it to Stoyshevsky, pass across, knocked away by a stick of Brian Parsons. Couple of hat tricks hanging out on the back post, waiting for that pass. Ratcliffe to Woolley. Ratcliffe wanted the one timer, bounces around, and Foley finds it and sends it the length of the ice. Woolley with his head up, sends a lead pass that's jumped by Parsons. 
He stepped in front of Zinchenko. Merritt battling for it at the red line, but Woolley able to work it to Ratcliffe. Drops it off to Stoyshevsky. Taken in by Jay. Merritt flies in for it, and he'll fire it all the way down. Prowlers get all four killers off in the final seconds of the penalty to Tucker Scantleberry. So better back half of the power play, or penalty kill for the Prowlers, they kill it off. So it's Shepsky around the net. Out high to Abdella. First shot deep. Heinzel up to Freeborn, lost the handles. Zinchenko, the shot scored. <laughs> off the turnover, Zinchenko. Boards. Looked like Freeborn couldn't handle the pass cleanly. And Zinchenko turned it around, got a good shot from the slot. Go, he went five hole on Ian Wallace. And that gives Bodon Zinchenko his 10th goal of the season. And the big next goal goes to Danbury just after the Prowlers kill off the Man advantage. McCollum scoops up that dump. And we will take a timeout. Bodon Zinchenko gives the hat tricks a two goal lead. We'll step aside. You're watching Port here on Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. I'm proud to serve farmers because everything they do matters. If I could choose one word to describe a farmer, I would say essential. Dedicated. Enterprising. The most creative people. They're providing food for the rest of the world. Some of the qualities I look for uh, when hiring is personality, perseverance, someone that's determined. We want to be able to hire someone that understands what we're supporting, and ultimately that's the grower. Come fill McMoran Place at every Prowlers home game this season. General admission tickets are just $15 with discounts available for seniors, military, students, and children under 12. Upgrade your experience in one of our suites, or bring the whole squad to the game with discounts for groups of 10 or more. Find your best option to visit the Thumb Coast professional hockey team by visiting phprowlers.com and find the tickets tab or call the box office at 810-985-6166. Secure your seats today. Thirteen forty-five left to go in period number three. Prowlers with an offensive zone faceoff now trailing by a pair. Parsons from the point, shot deflected. Jay with the return shot. This time stopped by McCullum. No rebound. Hot tricks will get a change. Get another face off to McCullum's right. Scantleberry and Ruiz to take it. Ruiz wins it. And a three on two started for Danbury. With the pass too far ahead of Cunningham, Ruiz flies into recollect in the corner. Cunningham around the net, out high to Abdella. Tetro wrist shot blocked down in front. They blow it dead for some reason. Net came off again, I guess. Saying the net came off again, so. They blow it dead again, and now a long conversation between multiple prowlers and the officiating crew over in the blue paint. So after the Hatrick scored the first two, prowlers got the next three, and now the Hatricks have the three after that. And that's why they have a 5-3 lead heading into, as we continue on in this third period, Danbury trying to get a late change in and they'll allow it. 
So the Ruiz line comes off. Harwell's line out there. Take the draw with Scantleberry. Henning plays it around. Schumacher keeps it moving, comes up to LaBelle. He'll clap it back around. Brian Parsons on to Scantleberry. Trying to work around Woolley. He'll turn it deep. Henning cut it off. Made a pass towards Berry. Ends up on Parsons' stick. Now Sch Scantleberry slips through a check. He's stopped in the corner by Henning. A battle for it. Chartrand trying to pull it out. Harwell off the boards. And now it's Schumacher. Backhands it back out and it's on the stick of Liam Freeborn to Scantleberry, but they'll say Freeborn was off sides. That one was close, but off sides are the Prowlers as Freeborn got an extra half a step. Top line out there for the Prowlers against Michael Falenga's line. This line responsible for the first two Prowler goals. It's Federley wristing it through. Knocked down by McCollum. Young turnaround drive. Sticked away by McCollum. They dig away in the corner. Pops out Federley. One time shot. And McCollum has the answer for that one as well. Top line with a couple of good looks for the Prowlers. Now Abdella getting involved in some chatting with Liam Freeborn. Prowlers switching up the lines. They send out Foley's line with Sam Merritt on the left wing. Now it's Tetro stepping around from behind the net. Lofts it out. Adam Heinzel up towards Merritt. Plays it off the boards and out. Tetro back in his own end. Quick up towards Ratcliffe, who tips it in. Adam Heinzel hangs out behind his own net. Now he'll step out. Heinzel skating up with speed. McKittrick picks up the dump. Heinzel keeps it alive. Foley back to Heinzel. D to D to Schumacher, but the puck came out. The Prowlers have to vacate the offensive zone. Heinzel chasing back after the puck after it took a hop off the wall. Schumacher's pass to Freeborn cut off and the one-timer by Ratcliffe floats wide. Another turnover in the defensive zone for the Prowlers almost costing them in this third period. Harwell to LaBelle. He rims it around. And now Harwell and Schumacher battling. Comes out high to McKittrick. Wrist shot through and gloved by Wallace. No one in front of him to screen that shot. 10.49 to go in the third period. Prowler's only trailing by a pair. They do have some work to do. Off the draw, Harwell able to win it back. With some help, he got to McKittrick. Who sent it deep. McKittrick again, down to Barry. Knocked off his stick by Parsons. And Barry retreats. LaBelle up to Harwell. He'll dump it around. Parsons. Comes to the middle of the ice and now short train out at center. Sauces it on to Scantleberry. He pulls up, sent Tetro tumbling. Shot end up, end up hitting short train. Jay got a soft backhand towards the net. That was doubled up by McCollum. Nice little move there from Tucker. Scantleberry took Tetro right out. But the shot ended up hitting Dan Shortrand on the way through. Browler send the top line back out there. 
There's Stoyshevsky and Graham on the faceoff. Freeborn touches it to Johnson. Wrist shot through, and McCullough makes the save. Rebound slipped right past Austin Federley. Federley and Tetro go after that one together. Zinchenko lofts it out. Settled down by Schumacher. Batted around him by Young. Young to the net, couldn't get a shot away. Well, played with it too long, he has it back. Sent it towards the net, kicked out by Wallace. Out high, Abdella makes a move, gets in. Another save by Ian Wallace, and it comes right back through the slot. A whistle, net off once again, and we'll take another timeout. 5-3 Danbury, past the midway point of period three. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. Back here in Danbury, 9.29 to go in period number three. Prowlers trailing by a pair. Hattrick's up on shots in this period at 10 to nine. Bodon Zinchenko with the only goal this frame so far. It's a big one. Came off a Prowler turnover in their own end. So Ruiz and Graham will draw here. And now Alex Johnson. Long lead pass, home run feed, looking for Merritt just out of his reach. And McCollum will cover it up and LaBelle wants a little piece of Sam Merritt after he thought Merritt came in too hard and put a little snow on McCollum. Evan Foley and Johnny Ruiz, the two captains on this face-off. McKittrick goes off the glass all the way down. It will just miss going on net. And that will be an icing against Danbury, so we'll get another face-off. Down on McCollum's end. Foley and Ruiz once more on the draw. Foley won it forward. McCollum watched it roll to the corner. Ruiz dropped it to McKittrick. He skates it out himself. McKittrick to the net, gloved by Wallace. Former teammates in Mississippi and Daniel McKittrick on the give and go. Got a good chance on Ian Wallace. And Wallace shut him down. Of course, McKittrick, a natural forward, playing defense out of necessity in this game. Multiple suspended defensemen for Danbury tonight. Everyone will be back, though, from suspension for the hat tricks tomorrow. Prowlers will not see the debut of Ross Bartlett this season, though, until Sunday as he's serving a two-game suspension. They picked up when he was a member of the Motor City Rockers all the way back in October. Scantleberry turns the corner, gets past Abdella, has to recollect the puck, taken in by Henning. Jay in there as well, Henning kicks it along to Woolley. Barry slipped it out, but Heinzel turned it right back the other way. Abdella on the regroup. Lead pass on to Barry, 
He sends Harwell in. Woolley gets around one man all the way around the net. Taken down Harwell from a tough angle. Stopped by Wallace. Federley looks to start a rush the other way. It's Freeborn over to Graham. As Federley going to the net, gets it there! And he just couldn't put it on. Federley didn't get enough on it, just went wide. Freeborn's drive off the stick of Connor McCullum. Top line buzzing again for Port here on Freeborn. Try to wrap. Ends up behind the net again. Tetro ended up on top of the back of the cage. Hattricks have not iced the puck. They wave it off at the last moment. Sim tried to work in. Lost the handle. Tetro sends it back out. This time that should be icing, but they wave it off again. Stoichevsky and Zinchenko battling for that puck, but Johnson's the one that comes out with it. Tried to loft it out, but he hit one of the speakers hanging over center ice, so that will draw a whistle. But Prowler's top line doing what they can. Couple of good chances in the offensive zone, but just 7.06 left to go in period number three. And now another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty coming against the Prowlers. It's Alex Johnson. I didn't see what happened. But that is not a penalty that you can take at this point in the game. Especially unsportsmanlike conduct. That's just not a smart play from Alex Johnson. I, again, I'm not sure what he did, but it was between the whistles. And the hat tricks with a chance to really put this game out of reach. McKittrick trying to poke it past Foley. Foley works back in, his shot just goes wide. Evan Foley looking for his second shorty of the year. Prowlers and hat tricks tied for second in the FBHL with eight shorthanded goals apiece and both have a decent shorthanded opportunity in this game. One time blast deflects wide off a body in the centering feed by Harwell. Only finds Prowler sticks as Foley lifts it down. 45 seconds gone in the unsportsmanlike penalty to Alex Johnson. Woolley lead pass on for Zinchenko. Belanga comes flying in to pick it off the wall. Out high to Zinchenko, to Ratcliffe, sauce to Woolley. Zinchenko one-timer, missed it wide. Ended up shooting it into the corner, but Ratcliffe recollects to Woolley. Wrist shot, bobbled up by Wallace. No! They say no, it was knocked down with a high stick. So the Prowlers catch a break. Wallace made the arm save on the first shot and then it was knocked out of the air. Woolley lifted it in, but it was knocked in, knocked down with a high stick before Woolley touched it. So no goal. This one's waved off, 40 seconds left on the penalty to Alex Johnson. And the Prowlers catch a break, but it is also the right call. So the faceoff will come outside of Prowler's territory, still a two goal game. Scantleberry tried to win it over to the far side, it's tied up. And now Zinchenko works back in, centering feed, got all the way through, Woolley faked the drive. He skates all the way around the net, bodied by Schumacher, and now Ratcliffe touches it, and, and a penalty coming up. 
delay of game. Now against Ian Wallace as the net came off again. And this time they call it. So Dalton Young will go serve. It'll be a five on three for 23 seconds. And this does not help the Prowlers comeback efforts. And really penalties, we talked about it between the second, third period. Penalties have been a killer for the Prowlers in this game. They've been a big source of life for the Danbury Hattricks. And now Frank Schumacher is going to the box as well. And things are starting to pile up. Matt Graham was over in defensive territory. He's shaking the net. That net does not look very secure. It doesn't seem like it is all that secure either way, whether or not Wallace is kicking it over. We'll see if anything else comes out of this. Right now they have Frank Schumacher down for two minutes for goalie interference, which is certainly incorrect, but if it is indeed two minutes for Frank Schumacher, his two minutes can't start until Alex Johnson's 23 seconds ends. That'll be five on three for much longer. And I mean, you can just about kiss the comeback goodbye at this point, unless Prowlers can get a couple of quick ones late and hold off the hat tricks for the next two plus minutes. Lots of chaos going on. There's activity over at the net, activity over by the penalty boxes. Twenty-three seconds left to go on Alex Johnson's penalty, and then I don't. There are a couple of penalties listed. I don't think either of them are correct because Frank Schumacher was about 200 feet from Connor McCollum, so couldn't have been goalie interference. And Dalton Young is serving a delay of game penalty, so not high sticking. I Hopefully they are able to fix all that. But the puck is down again, and the Hattricks have a lengthy five on three. Shot by Ruiz, stopped by Wallace. Net comes off and reactions from the Danbury crowd. So they'll try it again. 5.22 left, 20, 16 seconds left to go on Johnson's penalty. Off the faceoff, McKittrick to LaBelle. As a shooting lane, he'll pass it down to Cunningham. Across looking for McKittrick. And that one wouldn't work. McKittrick turns it back up to Ruiz. Still a five on three. Johnson's penalty is over. Ruiz backdoor play. Couldn't get it all the way to Cunningham. Now Johnson can step out. Still a minute 32 of five on three time for Danbury. But Schumacher's penalty time has officially begun. Prowlers had a 3-2 lead after a clean first period. Penalties started coming and now it's a 5-3 Danbury lead. Certainly no coincidence there. Just a tick over five minutes to go here in period three as they try to 
try to drop this puck, but referees still in discussions. So finally, it's a five on, now it's a five on four, but there are two penalties up for the Prowlers, but it's a five on four. Cer certainly the Prowlers won't complain about having an extra penalty killer. Doug Latuka and the, the Danbury broadcaster, Doug Latuka and I are, we're both looking, we're both looking at each other puzzled, not sure what's going on. We're, we're having as much of a conversation as we can while also being on the air. A Little bit of mental gymnastics here. Uh, maybe Frank Schumacher's was actually a misconduct, so it shouldn't be up on the board. Either way, here comes Cunningham with a shot, shouldered away by Wallace. Rebound came out in front. LaBelle at the line to McKittrick. Minute left on the Prowler's PK, which actually makes things look a little bit better. Because it's only a five on four now. Harwell to Ruiz. Now to Harwell, winds and fires. Caught the back glass. McKittrick tried to keep it in, but just could not right at the line. Harwell to Cunningham, try to centering feed, stopped by a sliding Alex Johnson. LaBelle switches spots with Ratcliffe, gave him the puck. Ratcliffe with a shot, knocked down in front, Wallace finds it and gets on top. 3.54 to go in period number three. 25 seconds left on the hat on the hat tricks power play. And we will take a break. You're watching Port Huron Prowlers Hockey on the PHP Network. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor, and this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Pepperoni Duo, a delicious combination of classic cut pepperoni, original pepperoni, 100% mozzarella cheese, and our famous flavored crust. Two kinds of pepperoni, all kinds of delicious. Hungry Howie's. We invite you to tune in to our next broadcast on Saturday, March 2nd, that is tomorrow, when the Prowlers visit the Danbury Hattricks again. Puck drop is scheduled for 7 p.m. Pre-game show starts at 6.45. It's all right here on the PHB Network. And barring a significant comeback here for the Prowlers in the final nearly four minutes as Wallace jumps on top of that puck quickly. They'll drop their third straight game and their 10th straight here at Danbury Ice Arena. 22 seconds left on the delay of game penalty for Ian Wallace being served by Dalton Young. Barry sends it up high to LaBelle, on to Ratcliffe, back to LaBelle. Wrist shot through, stopped by Wallace. Merritt plays it off the glass and all the way down. LaBelle stops up. Barry working on Young is back to five on five. They 
dig away in the corner, and it's go time for the Prowlers, 3.15 to go, and they are trailing by two. Brian Parsons tried to get the red line, he dumped it in, and the Prowlers get their top line on the ice. Harwell has to come back for it. He rims it around where Tetro's waiting. Fired all the way down, and icing called against Danbury with 2.50 left in regulation. We'll see who the Prowlers send out for this offensive zone faceoff, and Ian Wallace is heading over to the Prowlers bench. So Port Huron with a six on five attack, trailing by two with just under three minutes left. Top line for the Prowlers, Johnson and Heinzel on defense and Tucker Scantleberry, the extra attacker. Prowlers do take their time out though. So we'll get a moment to talk about this game so far. Well, Patrick scored the first two goals of this game, 55 seconds apart from Brandon Stoyshevsky and Chase Harwell, but the Prowlers just over two minutes later got one from Liam Freeborn, and then a minute and 28 seconds after that, Austin Federley tied the score. Before that first period was over, Alex Johnson got a five on three power play goal to make it 3-2 Prowlers. Then the second, the penalties began to pile up and cost Port Huron, Johnny Ruiz and Josh LaBelle with power play goals in that middle frame. Made it 4-3 Danbury. And just as the Prowlers killed off a penalty in the third, Bodon Zinchenko took advantage of a turnover to make it 5-3. And that is where we stand now with under three minutes to go. And the goaltender pulls. Murray told you he's out there for the Prowlers. The top line with, now they make a bit of a change. Evan Foley replacing Adam Heinzel. As Freeborn holds with it. Works up high. Down to Scantleberry. Johnson to Freeborn. Graham and Foley set up in front. Foley in the high slot. Graham in front of the net. Prowlers need two. Johnson down to Skittleberry. Out high, Freeborn again. Hat tricks collapsing. Blocking shooting lanes. Johnson walks. Johnson down deep towards Graham. Tried a centering pass. Cut off by Ruiz. He couldn't clear though. Graham in front, Scantleberry scores! Off the turnover, Tucker Scantleberry on the receiving end of the pass. Don't go away yet, it's a one goal game. Ruiz couldn't get it out, Prowler stayed on it. And Matt Graham able to reverse it in front. Federley and Scantleberry there. And it's Tucker Scantleberry potting his eighth of the year back in the lineup after missing the last game. And he makes it a one goal game with 2.02 to go. Wallace back in net. We'll keep an eye on him. The Prowlers work back in. Merritt couldn't get that one as a diving play from Dustin Henning prevented a great opportunity for Sam Merritt. Dalton J starts up, over to Heinzel, turns, gives it on to Merritt. Steps past Tetro, chases back after the puck, centering feed off of Jay's stick. Comes to Woolley, he launches it out all the way down. Will it roll to icing? Yes. So an icing called against the hat tricks with a minute 25 to go. A 5-4 hockey game. And Ian Wallace back to the bench. So another six on five attack for the Prowlers. They'll send the same six out there. And the biggest space off of the game so far between Graham and Harwell. Foley gets it back to Johnson. Prowlers only need one now. 
There's Foley up towards Johnson. Freeborn back to Alex Johnson. Freeborn again. Johnson, one timer stopped by McCullum and Harwell from his knees able to get it out. Final minute of play in regulation. Foley popped it out, taken away, and Cunningham muscling off Johnson to the empty net. He missed it wide. Ratcliffe there in the corner. Cunningham, Prowlers doing everything they can to keep a shot going on net, and they do. 40 seconds to go. Here comes Skettleberry. Stymied by LaBelle at the line. Prowlers need to get possession back with 29. Johnson tried to fire it in. Now Foley keeps it in. Foley to Scantleberry with 22. Up high, Johnson with 17. Freeborn to Federley. Prowlers need a shot. Graham trying to centering feet, take it away. Foley up high, five seconds left. Off the back wall, it came to McCollum. They dig away and score! Matt Graham digs it out of the pile. Three seconds left, and the Prowlers have tied it. Two goals with a netminder pulled. And the Port here on Prowlers have tied this game. What a game we have here in Danbury. It's Matt Graham in the crease. The shot went off the back wall, bounced back in front, and then it was a digging away in the crease, and Matt Graham able to push it home. What a game we have here, and both teams have earned a point tonight. We will head to a five minute overtime, and to say both teams, again, have absolutely earned a point in this game. Prowlers with a furious comeback. Matt Graham with a game tying goal. And we head to overtime. Second time these two teams have played in overtime in this building this season. And it was a similar story Prowlers made a comeback in the third period, a three goal comeback. Frank Schumacher scored the tying goal with 59 seconds left, but then Jacob Ratcliffe scored a power play goal in overtime, and that was the winner. That was one of the two overtime victories for the hat trick. Two overtime goals for the hat tricks this season. Hat tricks are two and three in games that have ended in overtime. Prowlers are three and five in games that have ended in overtime. And boy, what a contest we have for you here tonight from Danbury. Matt Graham and Tucker Scantleberry score in the final two minutes. Graham with three seconds up on the clock. It doesn't have to be pretty, it never is. It rarely is, those late goals. And it looks like the Prowlers will start with that top line of Graham, Federley, and Freeborn. Freeborn was the one who got the overtime winner against the Watertown Wolves a few weeks ago. On a goal that just barely crossed the goal line. So those three will start. Hat tricks will begin with Ruiz, LaBelle, and McKittrick. Toss out the notes, toss out the stats. It comes down to this. One more goal to win this game. Graham and Ruiz in on the faceoff and sudden death overtime begins in just moments. And off the faceoff, it's LaBelle who gets the first possession for Danbury. 
McKittrick. Back to Ruiz. Here come the hat tricks on the attack. Shot gloved by Wallace, and he'll hang on for a whistle and a face-off. Both teams will make changes ahead of this defensive zone face-off for the Prowlers. Prowlers send out Foley, Shartran, and Johnson against Harwell, Ratcliffe, and Josh LaBelle staying out there. Off the draw, Johnson tied up. Foley trying to push it out, and Johnson gets it across to Shartran. Prowlers turn with possession. Foley slowly works up. Now he's into offensive territory, but Johnson had his skate just over the blue line, so offside called against the Prowlers. Port Huron sends the top unit right back out there. LaBelle off the ice. Ruiz and McKittrick back out there for Danbury. And Xavier Abdella making his overtime debut in tonight's game. Graham. Leaves it for Federley. Prowlers turn it up. Quick up to Graham. He gets it on the freeborn. Tried a little toe drag, couldn't get around McKittrick. And now Abdella gives it towards Ruiz. He couldn't get the pass freeborn a shot. Knocked down by McCullum. That pass took a, guess a weird hop off the boards. Ruiz miscalculated it. And that gave Liam Freeborn with a good opportunity. Three and a half to go in overtime. Merritt leaves it for Dalton J. Turned over, Cunningham has a man behind everyone, but DeCumbus able to pick off the pass. And now DeCumbus across to Dalton J. 3 forwards out there right now for the Prowlers. Now they're in the midst of a change. J sauces it towards Graham off his stick, and now LaBelle will take possession. Drop for Cunningham. Cunningham works in, working on Johnson. One-timer by LaBelle, gloved by Wallace, sliding across. LaBelle did not get everything he wanted on that shot, but Ian Wallace with a big save nonetheless. Merritt and Falenga for this face-off. And Merritt wins it to the wall. And he's able to get it back behind the net to Alex Johnson. Has Merritt breaking. Johnson will skate it himself. Johnson working around Woolley to the net. Tried to take it to the short side. Ended up running into the post. So the net comes off. And we'll get another face-off this time in Danbury territory. As Johnson faked like he was going around the net, but instead drove the near side post trying to catch McCullum cheating. Offensive zone draw for the Prowlers. Two and a half to go in overtime. And the face-off will come outside of the hat trick's end as it was Johnson who knocked off the net. Harwell and Foley for the draw. Chartrand jumps in front of it. And now Decumbus back at center. He'll start up the left wing side. Drops back to Chartrand. Into offensive territory. Works around Harwell, Chartrand back towards Foley, jam play at the side of the net, Foley out towards Decumbus, hopped away from him. They play it all the way back to Wallace. The Prowlers get in the midst of a change. Scantleberry to Austin Federley. 
Cantleberry up the left wing side, working on Barry. Centering feed stopped by McCollum with the right pad. And now Ruiz the other direction with Barry. Very quick shot. That one wouldn't go. Don't know if Wallace had to make a save or not. Barry and Scantleberry tie up. So first pro game for Billy Barry, and he's on the ice in overtime. Went off the side of the net. Ruiz turnaround shot. Where's the puck? It hit Freeborn. I think they lost sight of the puck. So the faceoff will stay inside the Prowler's end. As Freeborn blocked that shot, the pass around the net ended up going off the side of the cage and then Chaos momentarily in front. Prowler sending out Freeborn, Scantleberry, and Federley. They'll face off against Falanga, McKittrick, and LaBelle. And Falanga and Scantleberry at the face-off dot. And the face-off win gets past LaBelle. Well, LaBelle with his head up, looks for McKittrick. Taken away by Graham, McKittrick trying to take it back. They battle for it, and Dalton J takes the puck. Lead pass on for Matt Graham. Johnson hustling to join him. Graham to the net. Backhander goes wide on the short side. And back to Dalton J. 45 seconds left in overtime. Johnson back in. Clapper! And that one went high. It caroms all the way back down to Ian Wallace. Who leaves it for J. Prowlers make some changes. Federley with 26 to go in overtime. Chartrand to Foley. Works in. Drops it to Federley. He'll recollect in the corner. Spinning on Ratcliffe. Out high Foley. Makes a move. Couldn't get a shot away. Five seconds left in overtime. It's in McCollum's glove. And they'll blow it dead with 3.9. And unless the Prowlers can get something off quickly here, they'll head to their first shootout of the season. And why not? Let's have this game go the distance. The Prowlers do have 3.9 seconds to get off a quick chance here. Off the faceoff, goes all the way back down. We're going to a shootout, and how about it? First shootout of the season for the Prowlers. Prowlers get four shots in overtime, two for Danbury. But the Hattricks end up winning the shot battle 40 to 36 for the game. This is the sixth shootout for Danbury this season. Hattricks are four and one in shootouts. First one of the year for the Prowlers. It comes down to the skills competition. What a game we have seen so far. Prowlers and hat tricks. When it looked like Danbury might be able to close it out, the Prowlers signed up for all 60 minutes and they've gotten 65 thanks to a couple of late goals. So uh, Ian Wallace and Connor McCullum sitting in their respective cages, in their goal creases and getting set for this one. And we'll see who shoots first. Prowlers looking to snap the 10 game losing streak here in this building. It all comes down to the shootout. No indication yet of which team is shooting first. Prowlers had a couple of shootout wins last year. Sam Merritt and Dan Chartrand were the goal scorers. 
the game, the shootout winners last season, and it will be Austin Federley to shoot first for Port Huron. The Prowlers will be going first. And here comes number 19, a goal and an assist in the first period. Trying to get the Prowlers on the board first. He scores! Federley came in on the right wing side and he put a quick snapshot past McCullum and the pressure is on for Chase Harwell who also has a goal in this game. We'll see what Harwell does. Also coming to the right side, cuts back to the middle. He lost the puck and Wallace with an easy save. Chase Harwell lost the handle on the Prowlers with the advantage as we head to round two. And Tristan Sim, the rookie out of Chatham University, will get the opportunity to put the Prowlers up to nothing. Sim goes to the left side. The left hand is shot in, and he's stopped by McCullum with the blocker. And now the hat tricks captain Johnny Ruiz with a chance to tie in round number two. Ruiz had a goal tonight. He works in quickly on Wallace. Backhand stopped by Ian Wallace. And that means it's on the stick of Liam Freeborn. A goal and two helpers tonight. The Prowlers leading scorer and he's returned to the lineup and he can end it here in round number three. Freeborn on the left side works in back in. Oh, and McCollum stretches out with the pad. It looked like Freeborn had him beat down and out. McCollum just reached out the pad and a toe save gives Connor Woolley a chance to extend it. Now Connor Woolley has to score. On the right side, works in to the forehand and he scores. And we will head to a round four. Nice move by Woolley. Backhand, forehand. And now we see Dan Chartrand. He scored in the shootout last year. Let's see if he can do it again here. Working on McCullum, makes a fake, and he lost the handle. And now it's the hat tricks with an opportunity to win it. And it's Daniel McKittrick, Ian Wallace's former teammate in Mississippi. So McKittrick with the game on his stick. Slows up, makes a move, and he stopped. We move on to round number five. Still tied at one in the shootout, and it's Dalton J. Well, he can't get his 500th point on a shootout goal, but he can certainly put the Prowlers in a great spot here. Dalton J straight on. Backhand stopped by McCollum. And it's Jacob Ratcliffe's turn. Jay typically a guy who just shoots, but he tried to make a move there. And now Ratcliffe, who scored the overtime winner in December, trying for the shootout winner. Ratcliffe works in, he scores. And Denbury wins the shootout in round five. Prowlers earn a point, but they will fall tonight. Six, five, your final in a hard fought game. The shootout winner for Jacob Ratcliffe, once again, the hero against the Prowlers. And the Prowlers dropped their 10th straight game 
here at Danbury Ice Arena. They've lost three in a row, now dropped to 19, 15, and five still. Now with 60 points though, as they do pick up the point tonight. Luckily for the Prowlers, the Columbus River Dragons took care of the, Dan of the Mississippi Seawolves tonight. So at least Prowlers do pick up a point and continue to lead the Seawolves for that third spot in the Continental Division. Jacob Ratcliffe, the winner. And what a game we had tonight. Hattrick score the first two in the opening period. Prowlers tie it up with a couple of quick ones and then take the lead late. The two power play goals in that middle period for Johnny Ruiz and Josh LaBelle really felt like a huge difference in this game. And then Bodon Zinchenko made it what looked like a sizable lead that might not be overcome. Prowlers took some penalties late. They had to kill off in that third period. But with a net binder pulled, Tucker Scantleberry scores. Matt Graham scores with three seconds left to tie the game and send it to overtime. The shootout went five whole rounds. But Jacob Ratcliffe wins it for the hat tricks. We invite you to tune in tomorrow. If tomorrow's game is half as fun as this one, we're in for a good one. We'll see if the Prowlers can pick up a victory. But for now, thank you to the Danbury Media crew for the use of their camera. I'm Will Wiggleman. Thanks so much to all of you out there for tuning in tonight on the PHP Network, and we will see you next time.